so nervous, eh? So restless. Stop pacing up and down and come and sit quietly next to me. I am sitting next to you, Father. But you would like to be up and pacing around the room. You would like to be wringing your hands. You would like to be praying to God that your family don't make a fool of you and an exhibition of themselves. Huh? It's a sham. They're sitting modestly next to me in your little monk's robe. I know you, Alyosha. You're my son. For all you wish you weren't. Now don't protest. Aren't you going to protest? I'm leaving. Please, he will be here very soon. Tell me, why do you love this elder of yours so? He's... Yeah, I know, I know, he's a saint. The great conciliator, the man who has brought more warring families together than I've had hot... <laughs> oh, dinners. The polite expression is hot dinners. Let us stick with that. We are in a monastery, after all. Tell me this. Do you secretly hope he doesn't come? Dimitri, I mean? Of course not. What a sweet little creature you are. <laughs> so like your mother. <laughs> Dimitri's mother was a hellcat, but my father better in bed. It's a sad fact that that's always the way. I don't mind when you say things like that. Dimitri is a dirty, blood-sucking devil. Do you mind if I say that? Well, it's not quarrel. Actually, the real reason I agreed to come wasn't to find peace and reconciliation with Dimitri. No, it was to see this holy man, this elder, this living saint my beloved Alyosha has fallen in love with. You will like him, truly. Even the most hardened sinners leave his presence smiling like children. Why do people always say such sentimental things about children? I never do. Every son is born with a spade in his hand, ready to bury his father. Even you, yeah, even you. That's not true. You think you're not a sinner like everyone else? That's the crime of Lucifer. Pride. He was God's favourite son, as you are mine, today at least. Oh, I'm ringing for some brandy. I could ask for some tea. Tea? <sighs> what will this spiritual marvel say when we lay our family's nasty little quarrels before him? <laughs> You must have some notion. This whole gathering was your idea. Do you imagine Dimitri and me weeping on each other's necks while a chorus of monks sing hallelujah? Do they ever shut up, by the way? Sets my teeth on edge, the singing. I hope I behave myself. You will correct me if I say the wrong thing. Now, I wish you would. Oh, how I long to be corrected. By a nice stout peasant girl. No, not by you. <laughs> he won't mind what you say. He won't? He's unshockable, is he? <laughs> well, don't worry. When he comes, I will throw myself at his feet and weep all over his embroidered slippers. I will abase myself. I will crawl across the floor on my belly. There's no need for you to abase yourself. In there? Oh, good. Don't be angry, father. Why does a boy think I'm angry? I know how it is with you. You act the buffoon just so you can despise the men who laugh at you even more. Even more than what? Even more than you do already. Perhaps, as well, you are ashamed and punish yourself. What in the name of the devil do I have to be ashamed of? I am a rich man. Besides, in your heart, you're as much a sinner as I am. I know. Are you indeed? Confess your wicked deeds to me, Alyosha. Eh? Come on. I will outdo you. I will outdo all three of my sons. You are merely the shadows I cast. I am the origin of you all. When Dimitri comes, you will try, you will try to find a way to end your quarrel with him, for my sake. For your sake, I will do anything. What are you told the elder our quarrel is about? Dimitri's inheritance. Nothing more. <laughs> there is nothing more, is there? Go on, kiss your father. Hmm? I will enjoy this. Father, is there something? The Elder Zosima. Bravo! Bravo! What a delight. What a delirium of the senses to finally clap my eyes on you at last, Reverend Holy Father. That's why I clap my hands, so that my whole body can unite in a chorus of praise. Sit down, my dear friend. Sit down. Shouldn't I crawl across the carpet first and kiss your sacred slippers? Father! Yeah? Fyodor Pavlovich, it is an act of great generosity that you've come here today for the sake of your family. Generosity? Do I have to pay you as well? You monks, you're all the same. <laughs> he has a nice face, I grant you, Alyosha. I will sit down. I will sit down, Your Honour, here on this lowly chair. Uh, that is the elder's chair, Father. Sit and be welcome. 
Is your brother here yet, my son? Not yet. Ivan is coming as well. That's my other son, the atheist. A real Bible-burning atheist. You met many of those. Perhaps you're one yourself underneath all that pious flummery, eh? Lovely word, flummery. Underused. Ivan is coming. You will find, my son, that I'm still in control of events. I'm not your puppet. I told him to come. Well, I spoke to him this morning. He didn't say anything about Ivan doesn't tell you everything. Your guests are here, little father. The curtain raiser is over. Now let the main act begin. Let them enter. Welcome. You are most welcome. My blessing on you both. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Introduce your brothers, Alyosha. The well-dressed one with the supercilious smile is Ivan. He comes to us from Moscow. And what is it you do, young man? I uh, was a student until recently. Now, he's a leading light out there. A writer in literary magazines. If you can imagine something so dizzyingly eyebrow. And you have come home to spend time with your family. That's what Alyosha says. Yes. Of course, we are all pitifully provincial, uh, but somehow he endures it's it. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Sir? Sir? He's an intellectual, forgive him. Reverend Holy Father or Your Gracious Eminence. Those are the correct titles. Please. Uh, the other one is Dimitri, my eldest, the only child of my first wife. He wants his mother's money. What money? Didn't I lavish it all on his education, his commission to the army, his debts? I've all the facts and figures all written down. <laughs> Some way. Oh, yes, sir. Tell Elder Zosima I am sensible of the honour that I appreciate it. It will all do no good, but tell him and explain to him. Will we begin with a prayer? Let us bless the womb that bore Elder Sosima. Let us bless that womb and the breasts that gave oh. him suck. Let's bless those, especially... You are oh. disgusting. You're drunk. Alyosha, we should leave. Nothing will be achieved. It will be just another squalid row. Don't go, don't go yet. Let us all be seated. My friends, it is all so simple, so plain, so straightforward. You must love one another. The sons must obey and respect their father, and the father must love and cherish his sons. A child could tell you that. Why have you come to me? I want my money. It is mine, and this fiend, this devil, this father has stolen it from me. Dimitri, please. Look at him sitting there smirking. He's enjoying this. Father has promised me that he will try to resolve this argument. He's promised me, Mitya. He's quite right. I did. And what was I thinking of? Ivan, say something. What an aloof little laddie you are. Ivan, at the very least, explain to the Reverend Eminence why you do not believe in God. He writes articles that prove he doesn't exist. My son is a nihilist, uh, whatever that means. The French are to blame for it as they are for most things. I'm digressing. I love digressing. To return to the matter in hand. Uh, the truth is, Your Holiness, Dimitri wants to squeeze the last few rubles I've set aside for my old age from me. He wants me to disinherit my little Alyosha and my poor Ivan here. He wants me to ruin his brothers so that he can live a life of debauchery. That's outrageous. That's what I call it. What would you call it? My mother was a rich woman. Not by the time I'd finished with her. God, how I hate you. How I long for Excuse your... Excuse him, Elder. You're, you're very kind to take such an interest in our family affairs. I, I'm sure you mean well, but... You're an interfering old fool. I'm merely translating. Elder Zosima, please read this. I have written a memorandum, a detailed account of my inheritance from my mother and a pitiful residue that my father says is left. Even that he refuses to give to me. What did you wrap this memorandum in? Sausage meat? It fell out of my pocket as I ran here. It's mud, that's all. You can't hand that dirty rag to the Holy Eminence. Have you no pride? He's a lout. Give it to me. Oh, oh you insect, you oh, vile oh, 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 We're off at last. Alyosha, go to the door and see. I bet there's a few months with their ears pressed up against it. Let's give them something to gossip about. I'm leaving. Should never have come. Perhaps the rest of you enjoy making a public spectacle of yourselves. I do not. A public spectacle? We already are. The whole town is a babble with Dimitri's debaucheries. <laughs> I'm jealous. His gambling debts, his drunken orgies. Do you know what an orgy is, oh, Holy oh, Father? I've oh, oh, some lovely pictures at home I could show you. No? 
His money is gone and now he seeks to extort more from me. <laughs> Shameless ingrate. And that's not all he is. Innocent Alyosha doesn't know the half of it, does he? Mitya! Poor girl. Don't you be quiet or I swear to God... What is he talking about? What am I talking about? Katerina no. Ivanovna. That's what I'm talking about. Ask him why is he breaking the poor heart of that poor beautiful girl, his fiancée. Actually, she's not in the least poor. In fact, she's an heiress, which makes it all the more shocking. Don't you say her name. Don't sully it with your dirty, disgraceful mouth. Poor Katerina You Ivanovna. will be calm, Mitya. Sit here beside me. Elder, you must stop this. Why don't you stop this? This is why your father agreed to come, to say these things. What? I would be interested to hear why Katerina Ivanovna's name has been mentioned. Would you? Why? First, let me explain who Katerina is to his saintliness here. She is the daughter of Mitya's old colonel, a decorated war hero. She's an orphan, an heiress, and here, all alone in our town. It's enough! It's never enough! Does my son behave honourably to her, does he? Or does he spend all his this time... This is my last war. No, sit, Ivan, help his me. His time and his money trying to buy the favours of Grushenka, no. oh, our local oh. seamstress. I use that word as a polite euphemism. He spent a fortune on Grushenka, and all she does is laugh at him. Grushenka? Oh. We both laugh at you. Not as much as we laugh at you. Do you think that any money in the world will persuade her to sleep with you, you wretch? That's what he wants at his age. This is disgraceful. He's right. Our boy is right. It's all so disgraceful that even I must bow my head in shame. It's true, Holy Father, that we are rivals, my son and I, for the favours of a woman of ill repute. That is the real basis of our terrible quarrel. We are Karamazovs. The money means nothing to us. Pleasure is everything. Gross, carnal pleasure. Is this true? Of course it's true. Look at Dmitri's face. Does Katya know anything about this? Yes. Alyosha, listen to me. Yeah, this it's... isn't quite the scene you planned, is it, my Alyosha? Which is a pity, but my version is much more dramatic and excited. I must say, the Elder's been something of a damn squib. I thought he'd add something more to the proceedings. Open the window, someone. He's going to faint. You're ill. No, not ill. Not at this moment ill. I should never have come back to this town. But you had to, didn't you? All those radical little outpourings were getting you noticed by the authorities, weren't they? I know all about it. Help me to my feet, Alyosha, my dear son. <sighs> I'll take his other arm if you like. It's all right. I'll take him to his cell. No, no, not that way, Elder. <sighs> What's he doing on his knees in front of our Mitya? I don't know. I give my blessing to you all. But to you, Dmitri Fyodorovich especially. Why? I have done nothing to deserve it. Well, don't cry, Elder Sosima, sir. It's just the way we carry on. The poor man's upset. Oh. Don't look at me like that, Alyosha. It was all a bit of harmless fun. Come to your cell now, Elder. Please. I oh. I'll open the door for him. I can be helpful. Elder, seriously. I'm a little afraid of my sons. Tell me, what must I do to protect myself? Repent. Repent? Repaint? What the devil does he mean by that? Oh, well, we've had our fun. <laughs> Time to go home, boys. We nearly there. Across the garden. Oh, no. I know. I know, within a... Absolutely forbidden to be here, but I, I had to come. The boundary is at the end of the path. You are quite welcome here. Oh. Elder Zazima is exhausted. I'm taking him to rest. Mm. Excuse us. The time for rest certainly approaches, but in the meantime, <laughs> can't I ask Mrs. Koklakova how her daughter is? <sighs> I'm sorry. Hello, Alyosha. How nice you look in that robe. Ridiculous, but nice. Look, Mama, he's blushing. <laughs> I'm not blushing. I had to come. I, I had to see you. I have been running round the town singing hosannas in your praise. Do you see her? Mama. Isn't she marvellous? And it's all thanks to you and the prayers you said over her on Tuesday. She is entirely cured. She is still in the bath chair. She has slept right through three nights without one of her fevers. And this morning, she stood up for 15 seconds on her own, holding on to nothing. It was seven seconds and I was holding on to the sofa. Oh, she contradicts me all the time. It's wonderful. 
You are a miracle worker. I am very glad that Lisa is feeling better, but that is due to God's goodness and has nothing to do with me, my friend. Absolutely it has, and I will proclaim it from the rooftops. Let the envious beware. Oh, some of the monks are the worst. They say you want a saint at all, that you are puffed up with spiritual pride. <clears throat> they say all sorts of things against you. Why, I would like to box their ears. Perhaps they are right. Perhaps I am guilty of spiritual pride. You're not. No one thinks that. Well, no one worth considering. Tell me, though, is it true, Blessed Father, that you yourself are very ill? Yes. I don't understand. If you're ill, why don't you cure yourself? God would want you to. What is the matter with you, Lisa? Stop annoying everyone by pulling those faces. Do you remember when we were children, Alyosha? Before my legs got bad, you would set me upon your shoulders and we would play the most marvellous games. I can't think about that now. No, of course not. I believe I will be able to walk again one day. That's all I want to say. You will. From his own lips, he has spoken. Let me kiss your hand. That's a promise. There is no need to kiss my hand. Oh. Alyosha! I'm very sorry, Lisa. It's just, at the moment, things are very difficult. There's been a dreadful row between... I have a message for you. For me? Uh, from a lady. From a beautiful lady. Much prettier than me. Who is the message from? I'm teasing him a little. He's become so tall. He looks down on me so. Don't deny it, Alyosha. You wish I would just shut up. It's from Katerina Ivanovna. What? She wants you to go and see her. She wouldn't tell us why. A woman with a most imperious manner and yet so young and so vulnerable, it's impossible to take offence at her. Not for me, it wasn't. She wants to see me. Why? I mean, I can't go. I can't leave the monastery. I can't leave the elder. You must tell her... That he will come and see her very soon. His time here is ending, as is mine. You will excuse me, my dear friends. I must go to my room and prepare myself and prepare Alyosha for what is to come. No, leave the window open. It's too cold for you. I like to feel the air, to hear the birds singing. <laughs> My poor boy, that was distressing for you. And I'm afraid I must upset you even more. It is time for you to leave here. Oh. It is time for you to go back to... No, me. don't say that. Don't talk at all. Rest. Alyosha, listen. You cannot stay here. You cannot hide here any longer. Your family needs you. That is what I saw today. I can't help them. No outsider can help them. Besides, you are not meant to be a monk. But that's my dearest wish. To stay here and to serve you. Your wish should be to serve God, not me. I can't go back, not even if I wanted you to. You have taken no vows. I don't want to go back. Everything is ordered here. Calm and beautiful. The prayers... The music? I even love the fasting. You are here because you are afraid. Oh, what are you afraid of? I want to be a good man. I see my father and poor Mitya, how they live, and I know that underneath it all, I'm like them, exactly like them. Perhaps Ivan is different. I hardly know him, they sent us to separate schools. But I am a Karamazov, in my blood and down to my bones. I can't trust myself. Good. Trust God, not yourself. Let me stay with you. How can you stay with me? You know, my dear child, I will be dead very soon. No, please, don't. I, it will be a relief. <laughs> I am happy to go. It is wrong, perhaps, but I long to be free. Oh, don't worry. I will not desert the battlefield before my time. <laughs> I won't, and neither must you. I cannot help your poor, turbulent family. You must do it. In my name, if you like. You are my son as much as you are his. I feel that. You must go out into the world and discover your nature. Is that your command? Go. Seek out your brother, Dmitri, and speak to him. He needs you. He needs you very much. I fear for him. Ah, there you are, Alexei Fyodorovich. The abbot has sent me to... The elder is resting. He sent me to inquire for the health of our esteemed little father. Why do you use that tone when you speak of him? Tone, Alexei Fyodorovich? What tone do you mean? You're not to go in, you're not to disturb him. I have taken my vows. I have taken my vow of obedience. 
I will obey the authority of those placed above me. I will obey the authority of the Father Superior. I will go in. No, no, you won't. <sighs> this is what comes of it. This nonsense of living saints and holy elders. Brother Zosima is an ordinary monk. He has no legitimate title. Except the one God and the people have bestowed on him. Stand aside. He is sleeping. Let him sleep. Will you stand aside? Or will you defy me? What I would like to do is strike you to the ground. But I don't. I won't. Despite the fact I rather think you'd like me to. You wouldn't dare strike me. They would expel you instantly. I'm leaving anyway. Well, it was always a joke. A Karol Marzov in monk's clothing. Had enough of it, have you? I'm leaving because he told me to go. The elder told me to go. I have to help my brother. Which one? The drunkard beast or the filthy, free-thinking revolutionary? Please, let the elder sleep. He'll forgive me for waking him. He's a saint, after all. The day is coming when everything will be proved. Everyone will know he was a saint. And what will you feel then, Judas? He's not in. The old one, your father. He came in before, sweating and swearing as ever, and rushed out to make a little trouble in the tavern. He's looking for that brother of yours. Not a proper row unless half the population hear it. He likes nothing more than screaming himself hoarse. Uh, soup? Mm -mm, no, thank you, Grigori. Put the other one up at your mother's grave last week. He might have washed the headstone while he was there. Is it true he's turned Jew? No, Ivan isn't a Jew. He was up at our mother's grave. I've said that. You want the summer house. The summer house? That's where he is, the one you're looking for. I told him to hide there, keep away from your father. Uh, Dmitri. And if you see Smerdyakov, tell him his mother says soup, and I say the wood wants chopping. Hmm? Oh, thank God you're here. Come in. Come in. Now keep your voice down. It's you that shout. Oh. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? I can't even listen to my own good advice. Did anyone see you? Grigori told me where you were. Oh, he's a good man. You're a good man. We are all good men, aren't we? Have you been drinking, Mitya? <laughs> I'm cursed. No, you're not. Why do you think that holy man of yours knelt down before me? I am cursed. He saw it. He could see how you suffer and wanted to give you his especial blessing. Is that what he told you? No. To be honest, I forgot to ask him. Oh, you, you are always honest. I am a scoundrel. You're not. Well, you're either an angel or an idiot. No, not an idiot. Uh, an innocent. Anyone else would look at me and see a broken-down ruffian, military bore who runs after whores. That almost rhymes. <laughs> I write poetry, you know. It's appalling stuff. Katerina Ivanovna has asked to see me. Has she? Has she? You, you were shocked to hear about the other woman. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alyosha, I embarrassed you. And how he enjoyed throwing that in my face in front of everyone. Pig! Are you really? I well, mean... I will finish with her. With Grushenka. That, that, that's her name, by the way. The whore. I don't think you should call her that. No. No, did she ask me lots of questions about you? Well, she plans to have you, you know. Uh, yes, she does. She says she'd hang your cassock over her bed as a trophy. Now, I don't want you to sleep with her. But promise me you won't. I've never even seen her. She is a peerless beauty. I am talking about Katerina now. Pay attention. Oh. She is frightfully well-educated. Very, very beautiful. Proud, passionate, with the most noble ideas. So, uh, Katerina meets me, the reprobate, and decides instantly, one, that I need saving, and two, that only a woman's love could redeem me, and finally, three, that she herself is just the woman for the job. And she practically proposed to me herself. She threw herself at me. She kissed me. Oh, real, real kisses. Well, her father died, and I uh, chucked in my commission. I came home to get my fortune from my father. 
See, I told her I had money, you see. I had some pride. And then I discovered that filthy beast refused. Oh, we won't talk about that. I wrote to her. Broke off the engagement. She was here within the week, declaring her undying love for me. It's an insult. An insult? But to be loved like that, like a Bible story. Now, Grushenka, on the other hand, Grushenka doesn't want to reform me. She doesn't care if I drink brandy all day and spend my money at card games. Well, what does anyone else's ruin mean to her? It's probably a consolation. She wasn't born a whore. A harlot. Well, that, that's the polite term, is it? So, as you can see, I'm in love. But with who? <laughs> this is nonsense. I know. The fact is, you are engaged to Katerina Ivanovna. But Grushenka has said that she will marry me. Uh, she'd love to marry me. I'm a pauper. She could do as she liked if I was her husband. Might buy me a uniform, make me act as her footman, ushering in her gentleman friends. <laughs> uh, the thought of that makes us laugh. They'd give me tips. It'd be a living. I'm glad that you're going to see Katerina. Tell her that I bow before her, I wish her well, I wish her every kind of happiness, and that I wish her farewell. Forever. I will go and see Katerina Ivanovna, but I won't give her any messages from you. Not while you're talking so wildly. Mitya, we must talk seriously. We must talk about father. I will speak to him again about your money. I know, that torments you. I will make him give you what he owes. Money. I don't deserve any money. I'm a thief, just as much as he is. Pilfering little cut purse and thief. That's the real thing. That's the real thing that torments me. Listen, Alyosha. Oh, oh how I love you. Now listen to me. Don't have any more to drink. Oh. The other week, Katerina gave me 3,000 rubles and she asked me to send them to her sister in Moscow. Uh, 3,000 rubles. Where am I to find 3,000 rubles now? What do you mean? Oh. The boy asked me what I mean. I mean that I hired a carriage with the money that she gave me. I oh. filled it with friends, and in the midst of them sat my dirty rose, my Grushenka. Off we went, drinking and eating and dancing every village that we could find, and in some that we couldn't. Uh, they, they wouldn't let us in, the villains. Every kopeck is gone. So when you see Katerina Ivanovna, tell her I am irredeemable. I have the honor to be the most thorough reprobate, and no woman on this earth can save me now. Tell her. But before that, Alyosha, tell me this. Do you know the meaning of the word despair? You took Katerina Ivanovna's money and spent it on another woman. Go to him. Huh? Go to my father. Say I relinquish all claims on him. He has my mother's money. Never mind. All I ask is for a poor 3,000. Huh? He must give it to me. And if he won't give it to you? Oh, then I will seize him by the throat and I will shake it out of him. But he won't, though, even then. Uh, especially as he wants Grushenka. It's disgusting! God, how disgusting he is. He, see, he knows that I can't get free of Katerina and go to my dirty rose unless I pay the money back. Does he know about that, Katerina's money? Well, he will. Everyone knows everything in this miserable little town. Well, they do sooner or later, and we, us, the Karamazovs, how they love to peck and paw at us. He might know now. Oh, Grushenka. It's a pearl. Oh, yes. I might marry her, you know. Grushenka. I might. I want to be rid of both of them. Well, no, 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 I don't. I'll ask you for the money. I will. You need to pay back Katerina Ivanovna. Do I disgust you? No. Never. I'm only your half-brother. Ivan is your real brother, not me. Do you love him more than me? I hardly know him. I would like to know him. 
Alyosha, there are some sins that no man can be forgiven for. No matter what the crime, God will forgive anyone who sincerely, wholeheartedly repents. I will manage that. I will repent sincerely and wholeheartedly. Once I've done it. Done what? You want to save me. And I want you to save me. You have to find a way to stop me. Stop you from what? I have the most terrible thoughts. Listen. I am listening. No. I mean, can you hear, hear something? You... My God, is he creeping up on us? Meet you. I'm out, you cockroach. Shoot! Look out, down, meet you. No, no, don't strike. Ah. Don't hit me. It's only oh. me, only me, gentlemen. Head your cough. How long have you been listening? Oh, not long. What do you want? Not much. Had one of his epileptic fits last week. His brains have been addled ever since. I came to tell you something. Hmm. Well, then tell me. Now? Of course now. In front of everyone. I have no secrets from my brother. I've been spying, as you asked. Oh. As you promised to pay for. I have to know what the old man is up to. What do you expect me to do, Alyosha? I know it's a dirty, miserable thing to spy on one's own father. He showed me an envelope he keeps hidden under his pillow. Huh? Your father did. It has writing on it. I can read. It says, for my angel Grushenka, if she decides to come. He keeps it under his pillow. Oh, I already said that. There's money in it. A thick bit of money. He showed it to you. He had to. She had to know it was really there, so I could say I'd seen it with my own eyes. The master sent me to tell her that it was waiting for her. Three thousand rubles. Three thousand rubles? Three thousand, exactly. I thought you'd like to know. You're sure it's that amount? Yes. It's a provocation. Huh? Three thousand rubles? He knows about Moscow money. Well, everyone knows about that. Huh? It's a small town. Everyone knows everyone's business. Do you suppose there's a soul hereabouts who doesn't know I am the son of the village idiot? Some poor, frozen creature that gave birth to me in a shed. You mustn't dwell on that. I won't, then. I won't give it another thought. Besides, haven't Grigori and Marthia been parents to me? They have. Excellent ones. I should be grateful. Grateful she died, that is. What sort of a life would I have had with her? She did the best thing for me by dying. Sometimes that's the best gift a parent can give, their death. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. He wants to drive me mad. And it's obvious. Grushenko won't come to him. She wouldn't. Not to him. Three thousand rubles! The master's back in the house if you want a word. Words? What use of words? The time is over. I'll put my hands no, around No, I his... will go in and speak to him. You... Uh, stay here. You have to stay I here. I will not endure this. Smirchikov, go back to the house and tell the master I want to speak with him. He's eating lunch. Ivan Fyodorovich is with him. He looks the part, I must say. He doesn't swear. He's an intellectual. I'll put a plate down for you, sir. You could give me a ruble or two for the information. I haven't a kopeck. I'll just make a note of it, shall I? Do you want me to kick you around the garden? No. Go. Now. Can you work miracles, little brother? Huh? I hope so. If he snatches her from me with that money, that exact amount that I stole from Katerina, I won't be responsible. I will do a terrible thing. Do you think I wouldn't? Don't say such things. I'll kill him. No. Never. Don't let your mind have such thoughts. Do what you can. But if you fail... It's fate. I absolve you of all blame. Go to Katerina, tell her, tell her everything, and I will go and find Grushenka. I won't give her up. It's him. Oh, it's him. I thought it might be my Mitya. I went halfway round the town looking for him. He's hiding. He's afraid. Or ashamed. I'm winning. Now put away that cognac bottle of iron, unless our little monk would like a drop. A warming drop. 
Well? No, thank you, Ivan. I confess you something else. Smerdyakov will make us coffee after lunch. He makes excellent coffee. Oh, little errand. Went well? Oh, yes. Uh, well, you must eat something, Alyosha. <laughs> I'm not hungry. Pile that plate up for him, Grigory. I want him to be happy. Why can't we all be happy? Now, there's a question, Smerdyakov. Answer it. He's as good as a play. It's because we're deluded, sir. Now, that's interesting. I thought delusions made us happy. Are you saying that if we did away with our delusions, if we saw the world as it is, then we'd be happy? We'd be something. Something different. Who knows what? Without delusions, we'd be like machines or angels. Maybe both. Steam engine angels. Yes, Fema. Dad's a bit conventional in his thinking. I can lay you out with one blow, boy. I can still do that. He can, Alyosha. I've seen him do it. But for how much longer? Grigori and I are old men. Our boys will one day wrest the crown from our foreheads. Stab us through the heart. <laughs> Ivan smiling. Aren't you enjoying the thought, Ivan? Eh? Have another drop. Go on, Smerdyakov. He's talked enough. He should be making the coffee. He's trying to impress you, Ivan Fyodorovich. That's what he's up to. Ignore all this, Alexei. You should eat something. You look pale. Is your elder all right now? I think he's dying. Nonsense! Why does everyone talk nonsense? Answer that, Smerdyakov. I do it partly because I want everyone to think I'm a fool, and hence ignore and underestimate me. And partly because I am, in fact, a fool, and talk nonsense whether I want to or not. The boy's an oracle. He's a nasty little heathen who won't say his prayers just to upset his mother. Get out of the room, the two of you, immediately. Who wants to listen to other people's family quarrels? Come on, get out! Thank you, Master. Come on, you. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, you just say good day, gentlemen. You're a limb of Satan, you are, talking to the gentleman like that. The devil's just as deluded as the rest of us. Uh, we should pity him. Uh, shouldn't we, Ivan Fyodorovich? Out, out! Your opinion of Smerdyakov? I don't have one. No opinion? We invent one. Uh, my friends... My ex-friends in Moscow would call him raw material, willing to do anything, say anything. They might find a use for him. That doesn't make him any less despicable. And yet, he admires you so much. He tries to tie his cravat as you do. It's charming. Someone undoubtedly will find a use for him when the time comes. When what time comes? People call it a revolution. Our long overdue, entirely impossible Russian revolution. He's the kind who tie rope knots in the executioner's shed. I think that's a harsh judgment. <laughs> that's right, Ivan. Pour yourself another glass. He can drink like a true calabas. You love that elder of yours, don't you? You admire him. I do. But... But what? That doesn't make me a schoolboy. Uh, no, it doesn't. I'm, I'm sorry if you thought I was being patronising. Uh, look... I am an atheist, of course, and a man committed heart and soul to the overthrow of the state. Are you really? I was. I actually was. And then suddenly that belief left me, evaporated. How nice it was to wake up in the morning with the most unshakable convictions... That's that why he left Moscow. The authorities weren't pleased with him for what he used to write, no. And his comrades didn't like this new sudden loss of faith. Not popular with anyone, Ivan. <laughs> he didn't come back here simply to see his old dad. That hurts. I wonder if one day I will look in a mirror and see you staring back at me, father. That's a thought for all of us, Alexei. I wish you'd call me Alyosha. Do you? Very well. I, I will, then. Father, will you listen to me? Please, give me to the money. You have enough, please. I will ask you for nothing else in my life. I agree with Alyosha. Let me give you a bit of fatherly advice, boys. Seeing you sitting there side by side makes me feel all paternal. And never look at a woman and think her ugly. Oh. They're all beautiful. Even the worst of them. They all have their little personalities, their little tricks. 
Take the whaler, your mother. What a woman she was for praying. The minute my hand went to the bedroom door, she'd be at it. And you know the shocking truth? Only once, only once did I try to thrash all that mystical nonsense out of oh. her. God. Don't listen to him, Alyosha. What do you mean, don't listen? I'm telling you, I only beat her once. Well, really beat her. You should be pleased, Alyosha. Where is she? What? Where's Grusha? Help me! Protect me! Defend me! No, she's here. Tell me where you are. He's going to kill me! Well, both of you stop this nonsense. Please, no. Calm down, please. I was talking to him. He was listening. She's here. Now, where is she? Why do you think she's here? Uh, My God! Just... Maybe she is here. <laughs> wonderful, that's wonderful. Get, get him out of the house while I go and look for my little pigeon. Grigori! She isn't here, Dimitri, I swear uh, to you. I can't hold him. Ivan, help me! Uh, Tell me where she is, My stick. God! Oh, the sight of your face, how I hate you! Oh. 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 You madman! You utter madman! What have you done? What have I done? You must go. You must leave. Immediately. He's not dead, is he? Uh, uh, no. Unconscious. Get out. Do as Alyosha says. Is she here? Alyosha, I trust you. No. Oh, I couldn't find her. I went to her house. I thought she... Well, next time the old monster may not be so lucky. Next time, perhaps, I will kill him. Old man, if you can hear me... I renounce you. I curse you. You are no longer my father. I'll run for the doctor. No! There's no need for a doctor. I've had worse beatings than that. I'm almost ashamed of him. Is he gone? That was quite a scene, wasn't it? Help me to my feet. Tell me that. Is she here? Grigori! Where is the old fool? He struck me, master. Me who used to wash him in the horse trough as a little boy. God damn them both. I wish they would murder each other. That's a terrible thing to say. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't see things like this. Neither should I. Come with me. I have to stay and look after you. Ah, I don't. Is she in the house, Grigori? Is Grushenka here? The only female in this house is my old mafia. You need to bathe that head of yours. Oh, stay with me, Adios, sir. I'll get a basin and a cloth. Look at the state of this room. Has he gone? Ivan? I'm more frightened of him than I am of Dmitri. Of Ivan? <laughs> yes, of Ivan. He's as cold as the other. He's hot. Listen, go back to the monastery. You'll be safe there. I want to protect you. I actually do. It's a sincere feeling. The elder says I must go back into the world. Ignore him. I say go back to the monastery. But first, will you do one weensy little favour for me, will you? I will always help you. As much as I can. <laughs> All that religion isn't wasted on you. A true Jesuit's answer. Go and see Grushenka. Tell her everything in your own words. Tell her that I too can do a noble deed. Tell her that I don't offer her money alone. Tell her... I am willing to marry her. Watch her face when you say that. Tell her it's time to choose between us, between me and Dimitri. Will you, will you do that? It will put an end to all this one way and another. It will end it. I haven't the stamina I used to have. I was a little afraid just then. I can admit that to you. He shouldn't have hit you. You're shaking. Go to her, but uh, listen. Don't tell Ivan what you're up to. Promise me that. Why are you so afraid of him? Uh, are you going to sit snibbling on the floor all afternoon? Be off! Go on, speak to her. There you are. Oh, I've been waiting for you. What for? What for? What a question to ask. <laughs> 
to see if you came out in one piece from the monster's den. What is that look, Alyosha? Has Father been saying things about me to you? Of course, I'd rather you weren't suspicious of me, but perhaps it's to be expected. We are both Karamazov. You're right. I was suspicious of you, just for a moment. Where are you going? I promised Dmitri I'll go and see Katrina Ivanovna. She's not home. Well, you... You'll have to go tomorrow. I wonder what she'll make of you. I wonder how she'll feel listening to the worldly wisdom of a 20-year-old boy. Well, you're not that much older than I am. Oh, you're right. I forget. Can we be friends, Alyosha? I'd like that. She won't be nice to you. Do you know her? A little. Enough. Never mind about that. I also promised father I'd go and see Miss Grushenka. Oh, he asked me not to tell you. I forgot. How could I forget? He only just said it to me. <laughs> Don't worry. I shan't say anything to Mitya. Miss Grushenka, eh? Mm. He probably hopes she'll seduce you. What does he want you to say to her? Perhaps I'd better not say. They're drawing you in, Alyosha. Be warned. Any other young ladies on your list? Well, I saw Lisa Koklikova today at the monastery. Oh. I wasn't very kind, I think. Perhaps I should go and see her as well. Perhaps you should, little brother. You don't really think Dimitri would ever seriously harm father, do you? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Hello. Hello. Is Katerina Ivanovna home, please? We gave your lot money the other week. My lot? The monastery. Oh, I didn't come from the monastery. No, not today. <clears throat> I shouldn't really be wearing these robes. Then why are you? Um, my name is Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov. You're one of them? Karamazov? How many of them are there? What a crew. I'm the youngest. Should you be talking to your mistress's guests like this? No. But you won't tell on me, will you? For a Karamazov, you've got a gentle face. Come in and sit down in the front room while I fetch up. You are here. Uh, Katerina Ivanovna. Um, Katerina Ivanovna, you must forgive this intrusion. My name is Alexei Fyodorovich. Thank Fyodor God you are here. I've been waiting for you. Oh, I've come. Or rather, I've been sent. He expressly told me to say, Dimitri... He sent you, I know that. What is his message? It's a delicate matter. It doesn't matter, I know everything. Don't look surprised. Do you think because I'm a woman that I'm a fool, an ignorant fool who knows nothing? Uh, of course, of course not. You can sit down. We'll both sit down. I know everything, you understand, everything. I think so. I don't want facts, I have all the facts. What I want is your opinion, your view of the matter. He should have come himself. What is his message to me? Why aren't you sitting down? He said to tell you he bows down to what? you. Bows down? What? He knows that he isn't behaving as he should to you. Oh. He knows it and is ashamed. He's right to be ashamed. Go on. Uh, it's not just the matter of another person. Another woman. Forgive me, but uh, there is also another matter. More disgraceful, perhaps. The money. The 3,000. Do you know about that? I've known about that for a long time. I know he stole the money. Why didn't he come to me? Why didn't he tell me? Pride. Pride will destroy him. I would have kissed his hands and forgiven him. You're very generous, Katerina Ivanovna. Do you pity me? Yes. You think it tragic that someone like me, rich, beautiful, well-educated, has been cast aside in favour of another woman? And such a woman... Perhaps not tragic. I think you might find it humiliating. What do you know of this Grushenka? Nothing. Nothing. You see her with the world's eye, the eyes of prejudice, but I have seen her as she really is. She's an angel. An angel? You're surprised to hear me say that. I'm astonished. She is beautiful. She is seductive. I love her. You seem very agitated. Come in, my angel, and meet this kind, sweet boy. I asked her to come here today. I sent a message. She came at once. We have opened our hearts to one another. I told her to wait outside and listen to every word I said to you. There are no secrets between us. Hello, Alyosha. 
Do you mind if I call you Alyosha? He's blushing. Yes, he is. And his mouth is open. He looks exactly like a baby bird. Tell me, Alyosha, why are people so cruel, so eager to condemn without understanding? Well, that's an interesting question. Go on. Give us a little sermon, darling. Don't laugh at him. I don't mind if you laugh at me. I think we are eager to condemn others. Partly it is arrogance, partly ignorance. I believe only when we acknowledge our own sinfulness that Alyosha, we... Alyosha, you're boring me. Listen, I will give you a sermon. I will tell you a story. It will make you weep. It made me weep. It did. And very well she looked weeping. It's the breeding. My nose goes red. Once, not long ago, there was a young girl. Innocent. Innocent as... As what? A snowflake. I like snowflakes. Exactly right, yes. But one day, she meets someone, and the poor snowflake is burned, melted by the flame of love, evaporated. Unfortunately, the brute, an officer, deserts her and marries another woman. What is our poor girl to do, outcast as she is? An injured innocent, how is she to live, to survive in a world that has rejected her? Imagine it, Alyosha. A lady like her, a woman like me, friends. Me, the poor little snowflake, evaporated as I am. Alyosha is also your friend. We will rehabilitate you, my darling. We will rescue you, yes. She is giving up the old life, the old sins. A new, beautiful life beckons. She renounces the past, don't you, my darling? How is Dimitri? He's well. And your dear father. Well. I heard about yesterday's quarrel. Did Dimitri really threaten him with an axe? There's no axe. But there was a quarrel. You need not concern yourself with them anymore. They are part of the old, discarded life. We have been talking of my Grushenka setting up a little school for orphans. She has been talking of it. She does love to talk. I will wear a grey dress and a little veil to match. Katya will come and give prizes to the pupils at Easter and Christmas. She will come in her lovely carriage and we will all line up to greet her. What wonderful fun! Do you think I'll enjoy that? It doesn't have to be a school. Well, Alyosha, you must be sure to tell Mitya all about this affecting little scene when you see him. It will make him laugh. It will make your old man laugh even more. Calm yourself, my darling. Remember, I trust you. Let me kiss your hand. Oh, Katerina Ivanovna, please. Perhaps it would be better if you didn't. There. Oh. <laughs> this is better than anything. She kisses my hand. Well, my dear, don't put your hand near my mouth, because I will bite. I will bite it hard. Hey. Give up, Dimitri. Never. Never. Even if I hated him. Never. You are the numb, not I, Katerina. A cold, icy article who'd warm no man's bed if he were ever unfortunate enough to marry you. How dare you? How dare I? With the greatest ease. <laughs> I've been laughing at you all afternoon. How I have enjoyed myself. You're a fool. Why, and you're a dirty bitch. Oh, shocking. A whore. In front of a man. Whore. At least they'd pay for me. You threw yourself at me and begged him to take you. Oh, you bastard! Bitch. Please, Stop control me. yourself, please. Oh, this is I terrible. Don't. It's nice to meet you both. Especially you, Alyosha. Please Keep hold me. of her now while I make my escape. Oh. Oh. I did make a fool of myself, didn't I? Well... Yes, but it doesn't matter people laughing at you if you're trying to do the right thing. I believe that. Was I trying to do the right thing? You were trying to save my brother. I knew she was laughing at me all the time. Neither of us were in the least bit sincere. I value sincerity so much. Why aren't I honest and straightforward? She will tell everyone in the town. Do you love my brother? Meet you, I mean. Who else would you mean? Pardon? I didn't think a man like you would listen to rumours. Cruel, lying rumours. 
Did a man say something to you? N not a word. No, he never mentioned you, I promise. Oh, marvellous. I'm delighted. Perhaps you had better go. I'm sorry if I've said anything to offend you. Is it true he's dying, that elder of yours? It's a pity I never met him. I need someone to talk to. I need spiritual help. Does he hate women? He hates no one. Go back to him. Go back to the monastery while you still can. All your family are villains, all of you. Do you think you're immune, Alexei Fyodorovich? You're not. Get out, will you? In episode one of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Father Karamazov was played by Roy Marsden, Dmitri, Paul Hilton, Ivan, Nicholas Bolton, and Alyosha, Karl Prekop. Lisa was Emma Noakes, Mrs. Koklakova, Rachel Atkins, Katerina, Juliet Aubrey, Grushenka, Katie Kavanagh, Grigori, Desmond McNamara, Smerdyakov, Joseph Kloska, and the elder, Sam Dale. The monk was played by Paul Richard Biggin and the servant by Miranda Keeling. The Brothers Karamasov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray, original music was by David Pickvance, and the directors were Mark Beebe and Colin Guthrie. robes of yours, eh? Hey? Golden icons, I meant. Confess, little brother. Dimitri! <laughs> it's all very well laughing. One day I may be reduced to that. Highway robbery. You frightened me. Oh, nonsense. He knew it was me all the time. How is he? Father. Oh, of course, father. He got a bad cut on the head. He was very shaken. To attack your own father is a terrible thing. I know, I know, I'm ashamed, but if you gave me my inheritance, that's all I need, I could give back the money to Katya and be truly free of her. Do you think he'll give you the money now, do you? He'll savour the blow that I gave him and plot more ways to destroy me, I know, quite apart from the fact that the last thing he wants to do is to leave me free to pursue Grushenka when he wants her himself, the dirty flea. Uh, God, let me think of that. Come on, Alyosha, huh? let us be serious. What did she say? What did Katerina say when you gave her my message? Will she let me go? I will find the money to pay her back somehow. I told her that you'd taken the money she'd given you to send to her sister. That you were sick with shame. Well, did you tell her how I spent it? How I squandered it in foul ways on foul people, drunken beasts? And I was the worst of them? No. She wouldn't let you speak. Oh, since she, well, she flew into a fury. Oh, she has a temper. It's the nicest thing about her. No, it wasn't that. Someone else was there. Ivan! Oh, he's a sly devil. Is he courting her already? What? Well, why should I mind if he was? But I do. Was Brother Ivan there? No, no, he wasn't. Why would you think he that was? That he has feelings for my Katya. They met in Moscow, you know? Though they moved in very different circles. What a pair of imperious beauties he and Katharina would make. She would meet her match there for implacable high-mindedness. They would beat each other to death with words. Are you serious, Mitya? Is there an understanding between... No, they don't understand one another. Understanding is for little monks like you. Don't let me say cruel things to you. Don't. I am full of rage. I dreamt last night. I killed him. Father. Oh, the talk of something else. Uh, now, you told her I was a wretch, a scoundrel, and that she must leave me to my fate. I couldn't. I couldn't speak to her what? properly. Miss Grushenka was there. A lady like Katerina entertaining the village whore in her drawing room. That's impossible. You shouldn't speak of Miss Grushenka, sir. I can speak of her as I like. I love her. Oh, let me picture the scene. I, can, I can't imagine it. it. Help me. What did they say to one another? Well, Katerina Ivanovna was convinced that Grushenka, Miss Grushenka, was willing to give you up. 
give up her old life entirely and become a, a nun? A school teacher. Oh! <laughs> and what fine arts would she teach in this school of hers? It was a foolish idea, and yet Miss Grushenka allowed Katerina to think for a while that she might do it. <sighs> give you all up and amend her ways. She did that so that she could laugh at Katerina Ivanovna and humiliate her. She's a tiger. And that's not all. She accused Katerina of throwing herself at you and that she at least took money for her favors. <laughs> she is an amazing woman, an unparalleled creature. Did you really tell Grushenka that, that Katerina Ivanovna had offered herself to you? I'm a scoundrel. Uh, poor Katya, how that must have hurt her. I tell you this with my hand upon my heart, that I am driven like a wrecked ship between those two women. The storm is all about me. It lashes down. I don't know where I'm headed. You need to rest. Come to the monastery with me. How is that old elder of yours? He looked sick. He looked yellow. I'll never forget how he knelt down before me. He knew. He hears the angels talking and the devils. He heard my devil whispering to me. He knows, he knows what I will do. The obscene, unforgivable thing. I will do it. And he will make me do it. You make him give me the money, Alyosha. If you don't, his blood will be upon oh, your head. Where are you going? To the devil. Oh, no, I am the devil. Tell Ivan. Uh, no, it's all in your imagination about him and Katerina. Tell him. I forgive him. His trespass, yes. I forgive him that. But one man I will never forgive. Don't pray for me. Promise me you won't pray for me. I will never promise that. You go back to your monastery, little brother. Well, you still can. The world is a dark wood and you will lose your way. Tell me where you're going! Father Paisy, what's happened? Why are all the monks gathered in front of his cell? Why did no one summon me? No, don't go near them. They buzz like flies. He isn't. The angel of death is in the antechamber. He stands ready to take the soul of God's servant to his eternal reward. No. You must rejoice. Rejoice? He is asleep now, but last night the elder woke. He woke and said your name. Why wasn't I here? Because he had commanded you to leave the monastery and you obeyed him. I won't leave him again. One of the monks gave the elder an account of the disturbance in your family yesterday. Oh. He opened his eyes and spoke. He is there with my blessing. I instructed him to go. That is his place now, out in the world, not here. Those were his words. I must see him. He is asleep. I need to see him, please. Go to your cell and pray for him. Then gather up your belongings and go to your father's house. The elder is my real father. I must see Young him. Young man, what you must be is obedient. Yes, father. I will summon you before the end. God bless you. A messenger came with a letter for you. Written in a woman's hand. From who? You may read it if you like. I will not read it. You're no longer under my authority. You're a guest here only. Take the letter. My dear Alyosha, I imagine you opening this letter wondering who it's from and turning the page to read the signature. I can save you that trouble. It's from me, Lisa. Yes, poor little Lisa in her bath chair. That sad cripple. Why am I writing this letter? Because even I would not have the nerve to say this to your face, darling Alyosha. Darling Alyosha. My face is on fire as I write that. The truth is, I love you. I have always loved you, and I will always love you. I think you and I should be married and live long, happy lives. What do you think? I know tomorrow when you come and see me I will laugh and protest this letter was a huge joke and mock you for believing a word of it. But I'll be lying. I do love you. You will come and see me, won't you? This is a love letter. Imagine me writing a love letter. I love you. Lisa. 
I sent you to your cell oh, to pray. Father Paisy, I'm sorry. Please, has anything happened? I thought you would be gone, so perhaps we will call it God's providence that you're still here, rather than the weakness of your flesh. He's awake. Come with me to say your last farewell. I see him. I see him. Tell me why you are weeping, my beloved son. Because... Because I'm a weak man. They are writing down every word I say. I must say only wise, comforting things. <laughs> What can I say to comfort you? Don't go. I must give you your final blessing, my son. Tell me, your family? Oh, don't concern yourself with them. I have no need to do that now. You are there to help them. Come closer. Listen. Act like a good man. Act like one. Only God and you need to know. Know what, my father? Alyosha, save others. If you cannot save yourself... Come away now, Alexei. Leave him in peace. You were speaking, Elder, on the nature of sin. Was I? I thought I was speaking of the nature of love. Pray for those without faith, without hope. For those what did he mean? He spoke to you, not me. I fear his death. Why? He will go straight to heaven. Won't he? I fear what it will do to the monastery. This family is divided too. His death will open... The eyes of the unbelievers. Oh, no. His death will open wounds that he won't be here to heal. I wish anyone in the world would die rather than him. God forgive you. God forgives everyone. Alexei. He's right. I can't stay here. Which do you think is better, the red or the white scarf? To hide the cut of my head? How do I look? You don't look well. Yeah, but well, the forehead's a bad place to get a cut. The red scarf? Hmm. It makes me look like a brigand. Well, that's better, yeah. Grushenka will be here today. I know it's... I don't want her to pity me too much. I am still a man. How do I look now? With a jacket on. Ill and tired. Why don't you rest, Father? Why don't you go to the devil? I will go, but first, you must listen to me. Please, Father. A drink will pick me up. What do you think? You have one if you must. I always like people more when I'm drunk. <laughs> you pour it for me. Please, Father. Give Mitya the 3,000 he asks for. Just do it and have it finished with. I won't argue with you about whether he's entitled to the money. He's entitled to a kick up the arse. You know, Ivana's left her house, taken lodgings in the town. He's gone. One day that boy will cut my throat. Ivan? He hates me. He never asks me for money. How can I trust him? You don't ask either. I don't want your money. Good, because you're not getting it. None of you are. I'm 55 years old and I never was a beauty. I need every penny I can lay my hands on to get the pretties into my bed. They won't come for just asking. Not anymore. I intend to lead my grubby little life right to the end. Let me die a sinner. What use would a man like me have for heaven anyway? <laughs> she will come. Mitya may have the looks, but he's a pauper. I am a rich man. 
that counts for more. Why did Ivan go? Did you argue? Of course we argued. I'd infuriate any normal person. Which says nothing very good about you. <laughs> Perhaps he wanted a free hand to chase after Mitya's fiance, that Katerina Ivanovna. You know about that? You do know about it. And I hope to shock you. <laughs> what do you think of it? I haven't spoken to Ivan yet. Mitya's a fool to let her go. If I was younger, I'd marry her. Why do you look so sad? You're not thinking about me, you're thinking about that elder of yours. Go back to him, go on, go back. Give me the money for Mitya. Give me another drink. <sighs> it's not as though I don't have the money. I could give it to him. He could give it to Katerina Ivanovna. Repair for the money he stole? Yeah, he could hold his head up again. It's in my bedroom. In an envelope. All ready. But it's for Grushenka, not him. I'll give her the money when she comes to me. I'll marry her and I'll see all my sons in hell. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of any of you. I think you are. Then if I am, I've a right to be. Papa. Don't cry, Alyosha. Not for me. Nothing can stop me now. I can't stop myself. Oh, you're not crying. I think I should talk to Ivan. It's strange that... I hardly know the kind of man he is. I send you all to separate schools, separate relatives, divide and conquer. Why do you kiss me? Do you plan to betray me? No. You're my father. I never forget that. I haven't a hat on. I rushed out like a mad woman when I saw you at the end of the road. Mrs. Kokokova? I was on sentry duty. I was waiting for you. I thought you'd call on us today, and then you walk past our house without a glance. Where are you hurrying to? To find Ivan. Oh, I need help. She hasn't slept. Lisa hasn't slept. Not only that, she's been awake all night, in a fever, talking about you. Nonsense about you. Incomprehensible nonsense. She wrote you a letter. She was begging me at five in the morning to run out and get that letter back. She is my daughter, Alyosha. I'm sorry. You must come into the house and calm her. You must. Well, what was in the letter? She's only a child. A sick child. Is he dead? The poor, poor elder. Is that why you look so sad? No. He's not dead. Not yet. Oh, I venerate that man. In my loud, vulgar way, I venerate him. I would give years of my life for him. You're a good woman. I'm sorry Lisa's upset. Oh, come in. There he is. There he is. May I present Katerina Ivanovna. Cat we have is... met before. Alexei Fyodorovich. Katerina Ivanovna? I didn't expect... Why are you staring at one another like that? You might give me a glance, Alyosha. Look, he ignores me entirely. He was on his way to the house to see Lisa, and I happened to bump into him in the street. Is that true? Well, I was actually on my way to see... to see my brother, Ivan. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I should have come earlier. The truth is, I forgot. You forgot all about me? Yes. Will you always tell me the truth? I intend to. I'm happy now. I'm at peace. What way is that to talk to a young child? So curt, so cruel. What kind of man are you? A Karamazov. How interesting you were looking for Ivan. He called twice to catch his house this morning. She came here to hide from him. Oh, that's <laughs> not quite how it should be put. If he's going to tell me the truth, then I have to do the same to him. Well, who's that? Is it your brother? Is it Ivan? I'm afraid I don't know. Go and answer the door, Mama. Immediately. Oh. Go on. I'm not afraid of him. I defy him. Bravo. I will go out and defy him to his face. Mother will enjoy herself. I'm exactly like her. 
curious as a cat and hysterical. That runs in my family, and we all know what runs in yours. I, I'm sorry. You should never pay any notice to what I say. But you don't, do you? I read your letter. Yes. What did you do when you read it? Laugh out loud? No. I fell asleep, actually. <laughs> it bored you that much? No, I didn't, no, not at all. It's just that everything is so bad, so gloomy. I can't seem to pay attention to any good news. I, I wasn't serious. Weren't you? I'm a 15-year-old girl. Who in the name of heaven would take any notice of what I say, especially on that subject? Love. Besides, listen. Not exactly the sound of nightingale singing. You'll walk again. Very soon. Well, that makes such a difference to you. Don't answer. You know Katerina is in love with your brother, Ivan. Is she? And to punish herself, she'll insist on marrying Dimitri, no matter what anyone else says. I told her, frankly, to break off the engagement to him. The fact he's a wastrel, forgive me, and other things, seems to make her all the more determined. I told her, we're not living in a novel. And that's very good advice. I thought so. I'm very clever. So she's actually in love with Ivan? If that's the case... If that's the case, then perhaps there's a chance for everyone still. Where are you going? You haven't said a thing to me. I'll be back in a moment. No little love scene for you, my girl. You think I am not sincere? Perhaps you are. Perhaps you're doing this from the highest of motives. It's just that I'm not always sure about actions undertaken from the highest of motives. Alexei Fyodorovich, I appeal to you. Listen to me. Will you listen to me? Say you will listen. Oh, if, if only you would sit down, Katerina. Ivan? Stay. Listen. Privacy is a bourgeois concept. I will be honest. I owe you that, Ivan. It is entirely clear to me that I no longer love Dmitri Fyodorovich, your brother. Pity is not love. It should not be confused with love. And he is pitiful, pitiful. Oh, that awful woman. This has nothing to do with that creature, that Grushenko. She's running around the town telling everyone that Katya, dear Katya here, went down on her knees, kissed her hand and begged her to return her fiancé to her. It's humiliating. Untrue. It is untrue. I will not marry him. There. I've said it. But the question of honour remains... Men do not believe we women can behave honourably. On the contrary. They don't believe it. So despite the fact that I will not marry him, the truth remains I promised myself to Dimitri. How can I abandon him now? None of us will abandon him. I will be there for him always, as a friend. Entirely as a friend. I will watch over him. I will follow him from village to village, town to town, whether he is with that woman or another, married to her even, or not. I will follow him. I don't care what people say of me. And when the time comes, when he at last in his desperation needs a friend, a friend to comfort him, out of the shadows I will step. Does uh, this seem a sensible proposal to you? It seems a very strange way to act. The thought is generous, but... No one will stop me. No one will stop her. She'll spend the rest of her life contemplating the heroic nature of her extraordinary self-sacrifice. A gloomy pleasure, perhaps, but who are we to judge? She asked you for your advice, Alexei. She won't listen to me. I'm leaving. I've had enough of this charade. I thought I'd met my match in her, but I find I'm surpassed. She fears real feeling, real passion, even more than I do. Don't go yet. You must do as you see fit. I must say, Katerina Ivanovna, with the greatest respect, you're not behaving... You're not behaving well. I beg your pardon? You asked me when I came in for my opinion. Well, I will give it. It's clear that you do not love Dimitri, and in all honesty, he does not love you, not in the way you would wish. I'm glad that that's over. But now, in front of you is the man you do love. So I beg you, Katerina, and you, Ivan, lay aside your false pride. Clasp hands in front of good old Mrs. Koklakova. Old? I had hoped you at least would understand me, Alexei Fyodorovich. You disappoint me. You're wrong, Alyosha. Utterly wrong. It's true that I love her. She knows I love her, but unfortunately that's as far as it goes. She does not love me. How could she love me and wreck our lives for the sake of... What? For the pleasure of striking some artificial pose. Oh, that's not to say she hasn't enjoyed tormenting me. If I could, I would return that compliment. Farewell, Katerina Ivanovna. I hope your life is as thrillingly tragic as you hope it will be. 
run after him. Don't let His your words happy... strike home. They do. I am aware of all my faults. I have longed all my life to do some great, noble deed. Is that wrong? Can he and I not be comrades in this? The redemption of his brother? Can't we make that sacrifice? You will persuade him, Alyosha. I know you will. I'm not at all sure that I can. Or want to. He's a very proud man. And I am a very proud woman. Indeed you are, and a very foolish one, if you want my opinion. In the end, I answer to my conscience and to oh. God. I've made matters worse. What I said was so clumsy, so naive. But also entirely true. Oh. It had that merit. Ivan is probably furious. I will go and beg his forgiveness. I must say a word to Lisa first, if you will excuse me. Lisa, I must go and talk to my brother. I'll be back as soon Don't as... Go. I... We were in I the will middle be back of... directly. Don't you dare leave me. I must. I hate you. Ivan! Please! Wait! Look, I know she's very headstrong, I know, but she loves you. I said too much in there, I know I did, but... Catch your breath. Must be hard to run in those robes. You're angry with me. Angry? That's all. I'd hate to think I was that easy to summarise. The world is a very complex place, little brother. There's still time to change your mind and go back to your nunnery. Laugh at me if you want. I have to leave this place. You could come with me. Come to Moscow. I can't. I wish I could help you. That's insulting. Besides, it's not me you're supposed to help, but poor Mitya. Why bother? They're two wild dogs tied in a sack. Let them savage one another to death. Let them. They are our father and our brother. Do you really fear that something will happen? People talk. And talk. Mitya is in despair. What's she like, this Miss Grushenka? I didn't like her. I thought you liked everyone. Do you like my Katya more? In the name of God, let's not talk about women. Change the subject. Grigori told me you'd been to our mother's grave. Sometimes even I am sentimental. Perhaps you are a kind person who likes to present the world with a hard, a cold exterior. Look, I'm not the brother you want. I'm not here to be saved by a few kind words. Find Dimitri. I'm no danger to anyone, more's the pity. Find him. Perhaps he has the courage to act. I saw him earlier. Uh, I was with him last night. We can drink like heroes when we must. He showed me the exact way in which he plans to strangle our beloved papa. I hope he does. I hope he does. Have you ever been in love? Not yet. But it will happen. Perhaps it has already started. What do you mean by that? Ah, oh, mustn't get interested. I have to tear myself away from this town, literally, so that the skin is ripped off me. How I loathe all this melodrama. She's infected me with a taste for it. Ah, uh, why are we walking back to the house? I have to see Lisa. The cripple? <laughs> why? Is that the one you plan to fall in love with? Are you mad? Or is that a penance for all our sins? What do I care? I'm going. But not to Moscow. Find Dmitri again before nightfall. I really think you should. I meant what I said. That you hate me. Alyosha, I'm 15 years old, and that means I sometimes act like a child, and sometimes like an adult. You must not blame me for things I say when I'm young. I'm sorry. I meant what I wrote in the letter. I love you. It is, at this moment, crystal clear. I have been thinking a great many things. I was only gone five minutes. I will always think more quickly than you. And what were you thinking? About you leaving the monastery. I was trying to imagine you in trousers and a waistcoat. I don't want you to wear a waistcoat with piping on the <laughs> seams. Well, I won't, then. <laughs> Why don't you say something? 
what would you like me to say? I'd like you to talk of our future. Well, it will be a long one. We will grow old together. We will be an old married couple. And I'll have a, a long white beard down to my knees. Are you treating this as a joke? Do you think we are playing a game? Are, are you humouring a poor, sick invalid? Lisa, no. Of course not. As I sit here, looking at your face at this precise moment, I'm falling in love with you. Truly. But you're not happy, are you? I would be. If I could stay here, in this room. We could barricade ourselves in. I did once for four hours. Mama threatened to get the woodcutter in to break down the door. <laughs> Alyosha, I must tell you this. I, I don't like your brother Ivan. I feel I'm only getting to know him. And now he says he's going. He's going back to Moscow. I wish they would all go. A lot of them. Your father and both your brothers. They drive you mad. You're so different to them. You must never think that. I'm the same as them. The elder protected me, Lisa. My heart is breaking. He's dying. I will console you. Would you like to kiss me? Yes. One day we will be happy, I know it. I must go and find Mitya. I love you. What good am I doing? None. Poor Mitya. If I'm all that stands between you and destruction, now I sound like Katya. Does anyone understand women? Do they understand? How could I have said what I said to Ivan and Katya? Why don't you just fall into each other's arms? Why aren't you content to be happy? Why did we ever exile ourselves from paradise? Because our souls are restless. Always restless. I made matters a thousand, a thousand times worse. You misjudged me, Elder. You did, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I would... I would exchange his life for yours in a moment. I would hold Dmitri's coat while he killed him, my own father. That's a sin. To even think it is a sin. To think is a sin. Why did God make everything a sin? What did you mean? Act like a good man. Act like one and only God and you need know. Know what? That I'm a hypocrite. A hypocrite for God's sake. Is that what you were, Elder? I will go to the summer house. Perhaps Meech is there. Or perhaps Grushenka will come. And I'll try and persuade her not to go to my father. Or to my brother. Will I offer her myself any exchange? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Priest boy. Beautifully. Not everyone has a musical talent. Some people have no talent. I feel I'm only just beginning to discover what I can do. If I were an educated man, I'd have no limits at all. As it is, poor Smerdyakov is a bastard. The son of the village idiot born in a shed with no father, no friend, nothing. Still, I'll make the best of myself. Sing that one about the duel. The captain dying in the snow. Oh, I'd love to see a real fight. With swords and blood. Oh, that would be nice. It would be very nice. Someone is listening to us. Who? It's because of the fits. I know things. I feel things. I sense things. You're frightening me. Am I? There's no call to be alarmed. I was just trying to find my brother. Have you seen him, Smerdyakov? I take it, sir, that you're referring to Dmitri Fyodorovich, because if you are, I haven't. Oh, do you have any idea where he might be? No. And now again. I thought you said... What? Nothing. Do you know what he said to me yesterday? He said if I let Miss Grushenka into the house, into your father, he'd crack me open like a walnut. <laughs> he called me a walnut. On his behalf, I apologise. On my own orphan behalf? 
I accept. Do you have any idea where he might be? Please, if I had any money, I would give it to you. And I'd gladly take it if you did. He's meeting your brother Ivan at the Capitol Inn this evening. Is that true? Ivan Fyodorovich sent me with a message for your brother Dmitri an hour ago. I left it at his lodgings. You weren't going to tell me. Three counts. You asked me where he is, where he is now? Don't know. I left a message for him. Did he get it? Don't know. And asked if he did get it, would he go? Don't know. Hardly worth telling you that. Besides, I'm afraid of your father. If he knew I was running errands for you boys, he'd beat me. Why didn't Ivan tell me to arrange to see Mitya? Life is a great mystery. Anything else, sir? It is not in the scale of things a large question. Will I have some fish soup? Or another glass of brandy? Is he here? I'm here. I'll have both. Soup and brandy. That's the true Karamazov answer. I will have both. Do you know what I've decided? I will live this life, this man's life, like my father. I will drink the cup dry. I will seize everything, everyone, every woman. But then, when I'm 30, I'll... I will renounce it all. God, he disgusts me. Well, sit down. He's not coming, Dimitri. He's hiding from us. We won't find him. We must find him. Why don't you tell me you're going to ask him to meet you here? I don't have to tell you everything or anything. I'm not my brother's keeper. You are? Uh, you believe that. And what do you believe? Me? I've handed in my ticket. What does that mean? Mm. I, I, I would so like the world to make sense. Well, some men, I know them well, some men love to despise, love to condemn. I'm not one of those, Alyosha. I would like to believe, I'd like to think of a good God, a benevolent God who hears our prayers. Well, listen to me, are you listening? Well, don't go. I think I'm actually too tired to move. I wish we'd spent more time together as children. I might have been a different man. He separated us. Why? Have you seen Katerina since this morning? I will never see her again. Uh, oh, you smile. You think I'm joking. No. We were talking about God. You should want to talk about God. Let me tell you a story. Or, or rather, let me ask you a question. Every day, every day, on this blessed earth, someone lifts a stick. Hmm? They lift a stick and bring it down with all their human strength upon the body of a child. They do that despite the child's entreaties, despite the blood and the tears that flow. They enjoy those intimately. They do worse things than beat, than maim, than murder. God allows this so that we may understand that we have free will. Hmm? For that important piece of knowledge, what price would you be prepared to pay, my brother? Would you pay in the broken, defiled bodies of little, innocent children? No. Huh? So, you believe God is a less compassionate being than you are? <laughs> what arrogance! What spiritual pride! It's the sin of Satan. But we needn't trouble ourselves. He doesn't exist, this God, or any God. We are orphans. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we were? Sometimes. Sometimes what? When I'm kneeling, saying my prayers, I feel I'm laughing at myself, sniggering. What a fraud, what a pious little swindler. The elder knew that about me. He said it doesn't matter if I'm a liar, a self-deceiver, as long as I'm a good man. What will I do when he's gone? I don't know. Wherever I am, I want to be elsewhere. Ah! Let's leave! This room at least, let's leave! Well, don't you want something to eat? Later, come on! Where are we going? Look! Look at the stars, Alyosha. What 
business of ours, are they? Hmm? This is where our paths divide. This is it. You must go in that direction. Go back to the monastery. I will find Dimitri. We'll find him together. You've told me I am my brother's keeper. Very well. I will find him. It's better that I find him alone. I won't mention Katya. I will tell him not to kill our father, that I understand exactly why his hands itch for the axe, but to hold back. Hold back, Dimitri. That's what I'll say. Nothing will happen tonight. Go to your monastery. Kiss your saint farewell. I'm your older brother. Go. Thank you. You'll do better than me. Mitya will listen to you. Go! And get your old saint's blessing. That was nice. Yeah. Listening to you two talk. You're getting fond of him, aren't you? <laughs> what? It's only me, Ivan Fyodorovich. Only lonely me. What do you want, Smedjakov? I've come to give you a message, sir. From whom? From me, sir. I wanted you to be the first to know that this evening, that I am certain that this evening... I'm repeating myself. In short, later on tonight, I will have an attack, sir. An attack of the falling sickness. That's what we call it. You gentry call it epilepsy. I've no time for this. I need to find Dmitri. Do you know where he is? I'm tired, sir. Worn out and worried to death. There's your father asking me night and day if she's come, if Miss Grushenka's come. He threatens me. He beats me. I can't sleep. And there's Dimitri saying I must tell him when she comes to the house to your father. If I don't tell him, I'll be the first he'll kill. Between the two of them, they are driving me mad. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for that. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care now I know about the fit. It'll happen just as I'm going down to the wine cellar. I'll fall. I'll be unconscious. I won't know a thing. What the devil are you talking about? You can't predict when you'll have a fit. I can sleep for days after a big one. It'll be a big one. You're going to pretend to have a fit? The thing is, I've told him about the signals. I've told Dimitri. Your dad sent me round to her house with a note. All the details were in the note. I can read. You read a private letter? Oh, there's no trouble, sir. It's not for me to criticise the master's handwriting. The thing is... Dimitri knows all about it. I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I told him. I had to. All about the signals. <laughs> he had his hands around my throat like this. Look. Hey. Oh, for God's sake, you clown, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> what signals? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If Miss Grushenka comes, if she comes in the night, she's to rap at your father's window like this. Too quick and too long. He won't answer to anything else. He's terrified. He's terrified of your brother. Dimitri won't do anything. Not really. Not for a woman like that. It's not just the woman, sir. It's the money. He's thinking of the 3,000 in the envelope under your father's pillow. He wants that to pay back Miss Katerina. Of course, he's also thinking that if your father marries Miss Grushenka, and he's daft enough to do it just for spite, then when he dies... Who gets their hands on your old dad's fortune? Mrs. Karamazov, that's who. He thinks of that. Ah, oh, Dmitri, never fear. You should think of that as well. Not a penny for any of you. I don't care about that. Of course you do, sir. Of course you do, and who can blame you? I don't want people blaming you. Not for anything. So, go to Moscow. The way you keep saying. Leave us to our fate. Leave me to my fit. We won't know a thing, either of us. Not a single thing about it, whatever happens. I'll be safe in my cellar, and you'll be in Moscow. When it happens... When what happens? I've... This is all nonsense. I'll go when it suits me. The lightning has to strike, sir. It does. It does. Tonight is the night. It is. I know it, absolutely. You must save yourself. I must save you. Give me your arm, sir. I'll walk you to the station. Just to the station, mind. You'll have to manage from there. We can't be seen together, can we? No. You're exhausted. You're drunk. You're heartbroken. I know about that. Come along now. None of this is your responsibility. Let me help you. He 
He blessed you. I thought I'd see him. Can you doubt that he is at this moment leaning out of heaven watching you? Watching us all? What am I to do now? Weep. Some tears are sent to us by Christ. And some tears are not. Can I see him? They are preparing his body. When can I see him? Soon. They will bring him into this room when they're ready. Wait for him here. Pray for him here. You are fortunate. Always remember that. He gave you a path. He gave you the world to work in. They are ready to bring the body in, Father. We will keep the vigil for him, Alexei. You will stay with us this last night. Goodbye, my father. Dear man. Rest in peace. They say when they buried Elder Barsonophy, he was quite untouched. After three days, utterly uncorrupted, and the smell, they said, was like roses. Blessed be the name of God and all the elect. They have a new saint in their company. I told her that her boy was not dead, and indeed, he was at that very moment on his way home to her. It's a miracle. In the land of the devout, overlooking their sins, where they're committed in knowledge or in ignorance. <laughs> Grant them that it's place nearly over. Of sweetness. Unite the night is nearly over. And, and preserve us in the remission of sins. <coughs> <coughs> what are you doing? Forgive me, Father. It is just a little difficult. What is difficult? It is difficult to breathe, Father. It is the smell of bodily corruption, of pollution. What does that mean? It means we were deceived. He was not a holy man. Even an ordinary sinner would not rot so soon after death. It is a sign from God. You will be silent. Will you give the unbelievers cause to mock us, to, to triumph over us? No one will speak of this. He was not a saint then. There are hundreds of the faithful outside the walls of the monastery. Thousands this very day. Do you want to fill them with doubt and confusion? Elder Zasima was a servant of God. He was a servant of God. Alexei, he loved you. Speak. He was a servant of God. A saint. Thank you. But the truth is, he stinks. He stinks to high heaven! Alexei! Alexa! What do you want? Is that the tone of voice to use to me? I pay your wages. What do you want, Miss Skrushenka? I don't know. I don't know what I want. That's the problem. A transformation. A total transformation. That would do. Hmm, or failing that, I would just like something to happen. I'm bored. Oh, no. Not that. Will I answer it? I better answer it. He kicked one of the panels out of the door last week. How do you know it's Dimitri? Listen! It'll be me that'll feel the first blow if he's not letting quickly. Answer it then. Well, I suppose we will have to have champagne. Bring it. Well. Seems I was wrong. Oh, this is much better. How do you do, Alexei Fyodorovich? Bring that chair over for Mr. Karamazov. I want him to sit close to me. <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing here, the little monk? He's dead. God defend us. Oh, God defend us. I never thought it would come to this. Oh, me 
Mitch, what have you done? The whole monastery's in an uproar. He was supposed to be a saint, a holy man. What? But he lay there in his coffin and he smelt like any dead thing. It was horrible. Your elder is dead. Oh, thank God. What? I thought that he had killed... Never mind. <clears throat> and what are you doing here, in my house? I don't know. I thought perhaps you would comfort me. <laughs> comfort you? <laughs> I am not here for that. That's not why you came, is it? Be honest, Alexei. You came for something else. I see it in your face. Do you still want that champagne? Oh, yes. Two bottles as quickly as you can. Go on. I've never drunk champagne. <gasps> Haven't you? <laughs> no. Would you like to hold my hand? Thank you. Would you like to kiss my hand? Uh, I think I'd better have some champagne first. <laughs> Wise boy. waiting for go mistress long ago when I first came here you told me that if ever a message came from a certain individual if a message came from him no matter what the circumstances no matter who was with you I was to come immediately no it's not him in person he sent the messenger he's at the kitchen door with a letter bring it here now oh god um, <clears throat> would you like me to leave I don't care what you do why has he sent me a message why now? Can it really be from him? Who's the letter from? My lover. My first, my real lover. I was 17. Oh, how I loved him. My handsome officer. How could I resist him? He promised me we would marry. And then he was gone. I was a different person then. Do you think I was always like this? Oh, why is he written after all these years? Here was the message, mistress. Wait, is it from him? Is he well? Tell me he's well. He's not dying. Not him. It was his wife died months ago, apparently. Here it is. Forgive me. Forgive yourself. Come. Oh, what a wonderful letter. Read it. Um. Brief. Intense. He's Polish, you know. Is he? Well, yes, I suppose that is obvious from the spelling. So, do I go? Do I run out into the rain to be with a man I have not seen for five years? Do I go to kiss the hands of my betrayer? Answer me that, Alexei Fyodorovich. Why hasn't he come for you in person? He wants me to risk myself. To show my courage. He doesn't really ask for your forgiveness. I don't want to forgive him. I want to love him. What will I tell Mitya? Tell him to go to the devil and to take his father with him. I am not a bone to be worried by two dirty dogs. A new life is waiting for me. <sighs> tell his messenger I will come. I will come to him this very night. Why not? I'll tell him. <laughs> What a lucky escape you've had tonight. I might well have decided to make love to you. You are very handsome. Don't blush. But now I'm redeemed. Poor boy. Now I am a virtuous woman, you have missed your chance. You're right to laugh at me. Am I laughing at you? I shouldn't. This is my chance. I can't believe that he has sent for me. Kiss me if you like. I may never see you again. Uh, I think uh, I'd better not. I will kiss you anyway. Oh, your sir. Farewell. Gone. 
gone. Uh, no. Leave the bottles. Look at him. Father preening in front of the mirror. I can see you. He must think she will come tonight. My Grushinka, my darling little... I can't call her that. I can't call her mine. I'm engaged to that saint, that slab of plaster, beautiful plaster. Poor Katya. If only I hadn't stolen your money, but you'll have it back. I will get it back. Now, I must pray. I must pray that when I break into my father's bedroom to get his money, I must pray to to someone that I don't look at his face or hear his voice or smell him. I must pray for all that. I must pray that I don't kill him. I would so love to kill him, a cockroach. Now, what did Smerdyakov tell me? The signals, I must get the signals right. When he opens the side door, I'll rush in, I'll threaten him. I won't, I won't hit out. At least the rain has stopped. Well, why am I standing still? Talk, talk, talk. Now act. Who's there? Yeah. Smerdyakov? Is that you? Get to bed, boy. I will guard our master. Who is that? I can see where you are. Now run off and I'm warning you'll be gone. Don't interfere. Dmitri! No! Oh, get back in the house, pull the covers over your head and sleep. I can't let you! Is that you, my darling? My gruesome cat. Murderer! Murderer! Get out of my way, old man! You a thousand times! What have I done? And what will I do now? Father. In episode two of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Father Karamazov was played by Roy Marsden, Dmitri, Paul Hilton, Ivan, Nicholas Bolton, and Alyosha, Karl Prekop. Lisa was Emma Noakes, Mrs. Koklakova, Rachel Atkins, Katerina, Juliet Aubrey, Grushenka, Katie Kavanagh, Grigori, Desmond McNamara, Smerdyakov, Joseph Kloska, the Elder, Sam Dale, and Father Paisi, Philip Fox. The monks were Paul Richard Biggin and Saikat Ahmed, and Maria, Bethan Walker. The Brothers Karamasov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray, original music was by David Pickvance, and the directors were Colin Guthrie and Mark Beebe. my Grushenka. I must see her. She's gone, sir, in a carriage. The officer sent for her. She went. Officer? What the devil do you mean, officer? A Polish one. A first... A first... The... Friend! The one who scored me all those years ago. He repented. Wanted her back. I can't breathe. Oh, oh no, my apologies, old man. Uh, I'm calm. I see how calm uh, I am. She's got a mockery. Please, don't kill me. Do you know what's on my hands? Don't know. Don't want to know. That's blood. How'd you get blood in your hands? You were in the usual way, I fear. Don't tell me. That's human blood. It's an old man's blood. For her. I, I did it for her. And she's gone. 
What officer? Polish. That's all I know. Please. Don't be afraid of me. I warn you. Sir. She used to comb my hair. Call me her Mitenka. Will you remember me in your prayers? Night and day. Now, what do I need now? Pistol and the hire of a carriage. There are no guns in this house. No, but there is one at my lodgings here. Here, just have some money. Well, did I ask you to pray for me? You did. Blood on his hands. He's done it. Done what? Killed someone, of course. Are those the best horses you have? They are. Oh, you're a liar. I could blow your brains out. Why aren't they harnessing the damn horses? They're afraid of you, sir. Oh, and you're not. Huh? Harness them, you fool. I have to go. I have to finish this. I have to... Oh, you will. Will I call for a doctor, Dmitri Fyodorovich? I'd be very happy to call for a doctor. I am not ill. Oh, I'm tired. I'm very tired. For two kopecks, I would lie down in the stable straw and sleep like a child. I would. God forgive me. How long to Mokroy? Three hours. I'll get the carriage ready. I'll... Would you like something to eat, Master? To drink? <laughs> it's the strangest thing, huh? Yeah? I look like a fool, I act like a fool, and yet I'm not one. You want to get me drunk. Uh, so drunk that I fall asleep in the nice warm straw while you, you rat, you run off to alert the authorities. I won't run anywhere. I swear it. Well, I will. I will run to her. To Grushenka. I will confess everything to her. Now, what's your name? Andre. Hmm. Well, I will take a drink. Just one. Just pour me one and then smash the bottle immediately in case I'm tempted. I won't be tempted anymore. What's that? It is my poor sainted mother's remedy for the hangover. A hot towel round head, a cold glass of vodka and a plate of pickles. She liked a drop of vodka. Does it work? Does it matter? Drink. I'll pour you another one. Ah. <coughs> oh. Thank you. You have nice manners. <laughs> Not like your brother, Dimitri, but he's generous at least. I'm afraid I haven't any money. Did I ask you for any? I thought you were hinting. Oh, it's a sour, sad day for you this day. I wouldn't take a kopeck from a poor boy like you. What do you mean? I'm breaking it to you gently, aren't I? Your brother's gone and massacred... someone. What? He was here, earlier, reeking of blood, reeling with drink, red eyes, a monster. He was looking for her, my mistress, Miss Grushenka. No doubt she's slaughtered as well by now. He was off after her. I didn't tell him you were here. But, 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 you're not making any sense. What has he done? It's not for me to say, because I don't know. Not for sure. But he swore up and down he'd gut your dad. You know that as well as all the town. That'll be the police. Look lively now, Mr Alexei. They'll have questions for you. The police? Oh, can you smell the drink? Uh, a monk stinking of booze, uh, nicely tucked up in a horse house. What I am I meant to make of that? Oh, my father. What has happened? I must go and see him. Where is your brother? I don't know where he is. He didn't do it. Didn't do what? You have to let me go. Dmitri Fyodorovich hired a carriage from the inn. We know that. Where was he going? This boy knows nothing. Thank you. If you want to find Dmitri Fyodorovich, I know where he is. Mokria. That's where you'll find him. Traitor! No! Oh, I'm sorry, I know, you're a good man who means well. That's more than I can guess looking at him. Now you, your holiness, you stay here. Or if not here in this house, then in the town. No slipping off to Moscow like that other brother of yours. Ivan, he's, he's not in Moscow, he's here. I spoke to him last night. He took the last train up to Moscow. Conveniently, suspiciously. Conspiracy was a word that came to me. Ivan had nothing to do with it. To do with what? Your father's murder? How much longer? Huh? How much longer? We're nearly there, my friend. <sighs> nearly there. I am not your friend. You know what kind of man I am. Uh, you saw the blood on my hands. My coat. Why are you driving me and not one of your boys? Because Christ went down to hell to free the sinners. Is that an answer? A terrible time is coming to you. 
Well, there's always mercy. Not in this world, perhaps, but in the other. That's what I'm saying. Don't you believe that? Supposing he is in bed with her when I arrive? What will I do? Drive faster! And I'll have to whip the horses. Do you want me to whip the horses? They're old creatures, two of them. Leave them. Leave me. Don't speak to me again. I am not answerable for my actions. I'll sing to you, then. He sang to me. Old Grigori. He sang to me when I was a child. When my mother died, and he, my father, was busy. Busy ignoring me. Sing them. In his memory, Grigori. Sleep, my darling little one. Still the moon looks down. In your cradle what have I, done? I will rock you. Sleep, my darling. I fire my gun, Andre. Be calm, master. Just to wake them up, just to get myself in a mood. I am here, your reverence. Uh, awaiting orders. I know you. It's Timothy, isn't it? I've been here before, haven't I? I came here on a little spree, didn't I? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Trifon. Uh, my name is... Call me what you like, master. I spent... How much did I spend? Thousands? Thousands! Don't be afraid of him. Give me the gun, Master. I'll keep it for you. Is she here? Hmm? I can tell from the colour of your dirty face that she is here. Where is she? Who? I need a whip to beat this man. You fetch it, Andre. Uh, uh, then Miss Krushenka, uh, why, well, she's upstairs. Uh, sl sleeping, Master. She was playing cards with the gentleman. Uh, but it bored her. They bored her. She went to bed. You think that I would be afraid to kill you? Who did she go upstairs with? Huh? He's a Polish officer. I can't remember his name. What room are they in? She went to her own room, her own bed. Uh, the Pole, he's not an officer nowadays. He's a customs clerk. His wife died recently and after all the money elsewhere, she had the measure of him. Is that true, Andre? He's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Now you go, dear friend. Ah, my best friend, innkeeper Trifon. Uh, I want you to find musicians, uh, singers, gypsies, girls, drink and food. Everything in style. Andre, go home. Yeah. It's not a place for you now. Here are 50 rubles. Huh? Mwah. I love you. 50 rubles, master. Are you mad? Wake her up. Huh? Here, take the money. I'm rich. Look how rich I am. I have thousands again. Take it. I can't take your money. I'll take some, Master. Uh, just to get us started. Oh, we'll have rare times. Happy, happy times. <laughs> well, my Michenka, have you come to kill me? <gasps> she didn't flinch. Brave woman. In a word, in a single word, tell me, do I go... Or do I stay? Stay. Gentlemen, I disarm myself. Now, why would I need a weapon when I am surrounded by friends? Ah, my dear friends, you look like the kind of people who'd be friends of mine. God help you. Come down. Ah, we'll have a party. I insist. My name is Dmitry Fyodorovich Karamazov. I have the honour to make your acquaintance. Oh, oh, yes. Fat chap. Especially you. Come down. Who is this wild person? Uh, this is the man. He's called Musalovich. Pan Musalovich. At your service. Hmm? At my service. That's nice. I organised a little card game for him. Half an hour at the table, his money runs out. Yeah, he was trying to cheat before that. You insult me. But I am not a dueling man. You should thank God for that. My father was the finest swordsman of his generation. Mita, take me home. Home? I'm a homeless man now, my darling. <laughs> How sad. <laughs> uh, don't let's be sad. Let us have one last night of happiness. 
Wine. Wine for everyone. Excuse me, Jenny. Oh, no, no, you can't go. You can't go to bed. Everyone else, though, can go to the devil. Or, or stay. Uh, what do I care? But you, Pan Musialovich, I've only just met you. I have a thousand and one questions to ask. But, for instance, forgive my curiosity, but... Is that a wig that you're wearing? <laughs> Is he wearing a wig, Trifon? It's a wig. Oh. There's no need for this, Mitcha. I've been a fool. Here are 500 rubles. Huh? 500 rubles. Take them and be off. You offer me money? Just take yourself and your lovely wig and go. <laughs> now. Do as he says. That's how you speak to me. I came here, gentlemen, in the spirit of forgiveness. I held out my hand to this unfortunate, uh, ruined creature. Listen to him, how he speaks to me. You came to her because your wife left all her money to her sister or to someone. Uh, her brother it was, Your Worship. Insolent peasant! If he is an insolent peasant, which he is, aren't you, Trifon? Uh, yes, sir. What name will we give to you? Huh? Dirty little leech! Bloodsucker! You were poor. You thought my Grushka had money. That's why it's you... It's enough, Mitya. Let him go. Oh, yes. Why not be merciful? Besides, the musicians are here. Go then. Huh? Go, if you value your life. I am a gentleman. I leave of my own accord. Are you sad, my darling, that your old love turned out to be such a specimen? I loved that man once. Pan Musalovich, what a name. I loved him so much. I was only 17. I loved him so purely, so completely. Did you? I don't say it to torture you. I have tortured you. I let you think I might go to your father, become his mistress. It was all a game, a bitter little game. But I'm cured of him, Mitya. It seems simple now. I love you. Why have I never told you I love you? Is that why your eyes are full of tears? Yes. Something has happened. Misha, tell me. Imagine, my darling, that someone, the, the Tsar himself, or an angel of God, were to whisper in your ear that an hour from now, infallibly, the world will end. What would you do? I would drink Rhine wine and sing and dance with you and pretend nothing was wrong. <laughs> what is going to happen in an hour's time? I won't ask. Let's not talk of the future. Let's not talk of the past. My past was nonsense. It never happened. That sweet girl and the gallant officer, you saw what he was. <laughs> in five years, will you be a fat official in a tight waistcoat, <laughs> my Michenka? In five years, I will be a dirty heap of bones, my love. Kiss me. I'll kiss you. I'll kiss you. Forgive me for everything. Oh, no, no more talk of forgiveness. I forbid it. seen a gazelle. I've never left Russia. I will live and die in this land. Whose glass is dry? Oh, empty glass and empty hearts. There's a proverb for us. For us, ladies and gentlemen. Will you dance with me, my darling? Only with you. Only with your eyes shining up at me. <laughs> ah. paid you to play all night. The time for dancing is over, Dmitri Fyodorovich. Is it, my God? Another hundred rubles, then. Play on. <laughs> what are you doing here? My name is Mikhail Makarovich Makarov. I know you. Yes. <laughs> it's too late for that. There are 20 men outside the door. Dmitri Fyodorovich Karamazov, I arrest you for the murder of your father. Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. What? 
Why? That's nonsense. Nonsense? Well, it is true. I can't deny that I wanted to kill him. I boasted of how I would kill him. I went to the house to kill him. Look at them. Staring at me. Well, look, you're Phil. I did not kill him. Grushenka, I did not kill him. It was me. I goaded him into it. I am responsible. You must hang us both. If it were within my power, madam, I would certainly grant your wish. You, rabble, clear the room. I didn't kill him. I killed... God saw me do it. I killed Grigori. Put me in chains. Put me in irons. I am the guilty one. The chains and irons I can manage and will. I warn you now to be quiet. Oh, don't listen to her. She knows nothing, nothing at all. She's innocent of this blood. I admit the murder of our servant, Grigori. I did not mean to kill him, but that is of no matter. I did it, and he is dead. Well, he is hurt, seriously hurt, but he lives, and he will live, according to the doctor. Now, your father... Sir, on the... yes. forgive me for a moment. A alive? Did you say alive? Grigori Vasiliev is alive. Your father, oh, on the other hand... Grushenka, take my hand! It's a miracle. Take my hand. It is not the hand of a murderer. He looked after me as a child, you know. He was kind to me. I'm weeping, gentlemen, because I am a child again. I'm innocent as a child. You deny that you murdered your father? In my heart, I am guilty. Write that down, Constable. But no, I did not kill him. Do you know of anyone else who wanted to kill your father? No. No one hated him as I do. <laughs> and will you tell me what provoked this passionate hatred? Jealousy. They quarrelled over me. Yes, so I've heard. I've heard a lot of things. For instance, there were quarrels about money, weren't there? About your inheritance? Dimitri, I think you should be careful what you say. Yes, quarrels. The sum of 3,000 has been mentioned. He owed me three times that sum, at least. No, four times, ten times. The 3,000 that you mentioned, that was in an envelope under his pillow. He had written to Grushenka. He was going to give to her when she went to him. She... Well, why am I telling you this? Listen to me, Dimitri. Don't Get her say... out of the room now, if you please. Uh, you touch her. I'll go. Don't argue with the inspector, Dimitri. Sit still. For my sake. Now, if you please. Well, why is she leaving? What are you doing? Who are you? I am the chief inspector of police. And you are my prisoner. What a pity I gave my gun away. Your father lies on his bedroom floor with his skull crushed. There is an envelope by his side, ripped open and empty. The envelope you just referred to, I think. Well, I didn't rip it open. Answer just one question. Answer this. I have heard you owed money all over the town. I have heard you had a kopeck to bless yourself with yesterday, and now today you are a rich man, an extravagant man. Where did you get this sudden fortune from? <laughs> I cannot discuss the money. Uh, it is a matter of honour. Oh, a matter of honour. Yeah, if you understand such a thing, policeman. Oh, see, you think it is more offensive to be called a thief than a murderer. God, do you want to provoke me? I'll do anything to get to the truth. Will you answer my questions honestly? I will answer them. Honestly. We found this brass pestle in the garden. See what it is caked in. You want to know what happened, huh? How I struck Grigori. I will tell you everything. I was in the garden, the pestle in my hand. Was the side door to the house open? No, closed. I was in the garden. My mind was rushing. And I, I, I went forward and then out of the darkness there was a sound, a noise, a, a branch breaking and then a voice. A voice shouting. Well, it was open when we arrived. Now, clearly, the killer had got into the house that way. I did not go into the house. Someone did. That door was locked. Uh, no one could get in that door. It was locked from the inside. He, my father, he wouldn't have opened it on any account. Only if... Only if she, my Grushenka, came. If he heard the signals. The signals? Yes. What signals? Oh. You had to knock in a certain way, too long, too short, or something like that. I can't remember. He wouldn't open the door unless he heard those signals. I did not enter the house. I did not kill my father. 
You're a liar. I must bow my head and bear this. I was an officer, a soldier. I've ruined my life. I accept that. No man in my life has ever called me a liar. Oh, they'll call you worse things than that, Dmitri Fyodorovich. The whole world will turn from you. Even that woman of yours believed instantly in your guilt. Yes. Yes, she did. But she didn't reject me, did she, policeman? As she wanted to suffer with me, that was her response. You cockroach. These signals must have been kept secret, especially from you. How did you come to know of them, Dmitri Fyodorovich? Smerdyakov. Grigory's son, he told me. He told me because I threatened him. He was the only other person who knew the signal. The only one? Yes. That's interesting. Well, perhaps he did it. Well, are you accusing the servant? No. You can if you like. Well, so that you can despise me all the more. But did you think I'm the kind of man to accuse a poor servant? Well, you can despise me all you like. You want to know where I got the money for tonight? Weeks ago, uh, my fiance. Your fiance? You know! You know everything! You know about Katerina Ivanovna. She is. She was my fiance. And she entrusted me with a sum of money to send to her sister in Moscow. I took the money. I spent it here in this very inn. Yeah, you're right. I know about that. I told everyone I spent it all, but. Here's the truly shameful thing. I kept half of it. I hid half of it away so that I'd have enough if Grushenka came to me. I had enough to you run... You kept 1,500 rubles hidden away? Yes. What admirable self-discipline. Oh. And you such a, oh, forgive me, wild, uncontrollable creature. Or so you like to appear to be. It was a shameful thing to do. <laughs> no. I won't call you a liar again. No, I think you are. Bring in the landlord. He looks like a keen keeper of accounts. Let's ask him about the money. Would you like a drink? No? Help yourself. We are alone. Can I ask you, as a fellow human being, one with compassion, if you can promise me that she, my Grushenka, won't come to harm, she won't be punished in any way. I'll make no bargain with you. Your Honour. There's no need to kneel, innkeeper. Forgive me. I'm old-fashioned. How might I help you, sirs? Some weeks ago, Dmitri Fyodorovich, with an entourage, arrived here and spent three days in a long, drunken orgy. Is that so? Yeah, could be. Uh, what is an entourage, Master? I am also an old-fashioned man. Constable, kick him. <laughs> he came here with his old friends and found new ones. Horse thieves, swindlers, card shops. They came in flocks and droves. The old village was in an uproar. Again. <laughs> How much money did he spend here? I tried to protect him, but he just gave handfuls of notes to anyone who asked. I, I was thinking of the bill, but, but he paid me. He paid me handsomely. Did he spend one, two or three thousand? Think. Uh, more than two, sir. I'd stake my life on it. It's not your life you've staked. That's enough. The truth is plain. You killed your father and you robbed him. You're a murderer and a thief. Look at this. It's the money you gave Miss Grushenka's servant. Your father's blood is on it. What do you say? To you, nothing. Can I speak one word to her in private before I go with you? No. Guard the prisoner! <sighs> Open the window. I'll do that, Master. Is that you? The man who drove me here. I've forgotten your name. Oh, that air is beautiful, thank you. My name is Andrei, sir. No speaking to the prisoner. Did no one notice you sitting quietly in that corner? <laughs> uh, do you know what I feel? I, 
I am filled with happiness. Why? Why am I happy now? You are powerless now. Is that true? I'm certainly at peace for once. My situation is hopeless. No one will believe me. And yet I am an innocent man. Innocent of this crime, at least. You need a priest. No speaking to the prisoner. You'd better not speak to me. He'll tell the inspector. Oh, do you know what that bird is? Singing? Oh, don't answer. Ah, oh, everything goes on. I rejoice in that. I might ask Elder Zosima from the monastery to come and visit me in the jailhouse. My brother loves him. He's dead. The Elder. Is that true, Andre? Is he dead too? How strange a coincidence. I hope he had a better death than my poor father. Is it possible I pity him? It's only because he's gone. If he were to walk through the door now... Well, he won't. So the Elder is dead as well. God rest his soul. God, have mercy on mine. It's time to go. Stand up, Dmitri Fyodorovich Karamazov. Button your shirt. Remember, as we walk out of here, that you were an officer of the Tsar. Can I say one word to her? Oh, please. She's outside with the rest. There's quite a crowd out there. Your little Grushka wasn't much help to you, by the way. I just spoke to her. She said you spent all of Katya's money at that orgy of yours three weeks ago. She's sure of it. Will you give her a fond kiss farewell now? I am the one to blame for everything. Not her. I'm ready. I am watching your downfall, ignominious man. Let her rejoice now in the choice she made. <laughs> Who is that man? A hyena. Just ignore him. There he is! Oh, what are they doing? Why are they kneeling? You're a hero as well as a villain. By nightfall, they'll be singing ballads about you. Bow your head to them, Dmitri Fyodorovich. Not one man among them would not have done as you have done. As for the women, they smell blood, the poor man's perfume. They love it. Why do you say such things? Do I offend you? Make way there. Mitya! He asked me about the money. He asked me. Mitya, I told him. It doesn't matter what you said. All that is important. Enough opera. We have to leave now. I am an innocent man. I am an innocent man! God forgive me. Will he forgive me? I don't care for his forgiveness, only yours. I will walk behind you into exile, into the grave, my dear man. I've heard that speech a number of times, word for word. Out of the way now, all of you. Let me look at you. Let me kiss your hand. What have I done? Take him. Mitya! Right. Listen. Listen, Grushenka, go to him, go to Alyosha. Go, he will help you. Drive! I have been looking everywhere for you. They told me you were here. What on earth are you doing in Grushenka's house? You should not have come here. Of course I should not have come here, but I came to rescue you. Lisa told me I must not return until I had found you. Until I had comforted you. Oh, we must get you out of this house before the whole town hears of it. What are you doing here, Alyosha? You're a monk. No, I'm not a monk. I'm not anything. I don't understand. This is the last day I will ever wear these monks' robes. You ask why I came here. I came from the monastery. Directly from the monastery. The elder died. My teacher. The one I hoped. What? What did I hope? I can't remember. I came here and I wanted something shameless. I was tired of thinking. I wanted to be myself. I am not a good man. The elder knew that. Oh, I have heard the rumours about him. He is still a holy man, are you sure? I know that, of course. I know that. Despite the smell. You couldn't help that. It's nature. 
We all decay, though it's a great pity that he did. No one expected it. What a terrible shock that was when I heard. I prayed to him like a saint. Well, life is full of surprises. I must go to the house. I must comfort Mafia. Mafia? Who on earth is Mafia? Grigori's wife. And who on earth is Grigori? My father's servant. He was struck too. He may die. An innocent, innocent man. Oh, him. He's injured, but not that badly. He's probably not that innocent either. Never mind about him. Come back with me. Poor boy, you poor orphan. Yes. I am an orphan now. Let me be a mother to you. Hmm? An ugly old mother. Three. You've been drinking, Alexei. I'll have to go back to my own house. I'll have to go back to to make arrangements to do the various things that must be done. I must send a telegram to Ivan. That's the first oh, thing. Oh, they've I... sent for him already. I don't believe a word of it. A word of what? Just because a man is a free thinker, it doesn't mean anything. He had nothing to do with it. He was on a train at the time, with hundreds and thousands of witnesses. The malice of the human race never ceases to amaze me. They even say that you well, are dead. That, that, that I... You look like a man. Not a boy sitting there. I must go and see Grigori. I must beg his forgiveness. You have done nothing. I know that. We're all the same. Us Karamazovs. The same tune sung in different keys. We're all capable of anything. Is that you, young master? You needn't wake. Tell the old woman to come in and open the curtains. It's as dark as a mine in here. Mafia! She's with Smerdyakov. He's a scoundrel. What does he mean by getting ill? Grigori, I must ask you, I must beg you to forgive me, Chia. Let me go and tell him you forgive him. For the blow to my head, I forgive him. For the blow to his father's head, not God himself could forgive that. Tell him... He didn't kill. He didn't do it. I saw him with my own eyes. You saw him strike the blow? I saw him with my own eyes... Crushed like an egg. We won't talk of that yet. The policeman wrote me down in a book. There's not many will weep for him. Your father. I will. One day. He loved you. In as much as he loved anyone but himself. <laughs> Tomorrow. Why won't Mitya see me? It's been days since I spoke to him. What's wrong, Grushenko? What is wrong? Perhaps he will see you tomorrow. <sighs> he is in one of his moods. <sighs> All morning I baked him pies. I am not the kind of woman who bakes pies. Nevertheless, I made these, and do you know what he does? He asks me if they are poisoned. Well, he quarrelled again. The quarrels are what keep him in spirits. Do you want one of these damp pies? Uh... He asked me about you. I told him you were well. It's good meat. Someone has to eat something. I, I told him my old Polish flame had written to me asking for a loan. I thought it would make him laugh. What cause is he to be jealous? I'll give him cause. It's cold. I'll walk you home. <laughs> Through the town? In front of all your respectable acquaintances? <laughs> I am a Karamazov. Entirely unrespectable. I know what he'll do. He'll insist on going into the court and speaking for himself. 
If you won't see me, you must insist on talking to him about a lawyer. Oh. Tomorrow, we're running out of time. We must get him a good lawyer. For the love of God, don't speak to me of lawyers. I beg you. But someone must speak of them. Oh, someone has. Someone has. What are you talking about? Katya, the lovely Katerina Ivanovna. She's gone behind your back and mine. She has produced a wonderful lawyer, the most expensive money can buy, and a doctor. A doctor from Moscow, a, a brain doctor who will swear in court that Mita is mad, that your brother is guilty but mad. How am I to compete with that? With these poison pies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will take them home and eat them. <laughs> Every one, I promise you. Okay. <laughs> Has he agreed to this, the lawyer and this doctor? I wasn't supposed to tell you. He loves her. He does not love her. He is so ashamed. He sits with his coat over his head. It's as much as I can do to make sure he shaves. He looks... Oh, what will the judge think of him when he sees him on Monday? First impressions are so important. Oh, she will almost certainly buy him a new suit. Well, I will buy him a better one. And a shirt with ruffles. Do you see how petty my mind is? What will happen? What will happen at the trial? We'll be finding guilty. He is not guilty. You say that. You say that. He's not in the least used to say it unless you can say who did kill that horrible old man. Oh, oh you should forgive me. Yeah, he was a horrible man. Still, he... Still. Exactly. Still. Do you think that Mita will ever stand in court and allow some doctor to call him a madman? Even to save himself from Siberia? He won't. Yet, between them, they have persuaded him, it seems. Between them? Ivan is part of it, of course. It's probably all his plan. His plan, her money. You and I are nothing. Mita looks to him. He won't even see you. So, little Alyosha, are you jealous? As jealous as I am now? Yes. That's what we're like, human beings. Monday. The trial starts on Monday. Perhaps it is a wise decision. The doctor. All the evidence... Oh, I spit at their evidence. Grigory's testimony is all against him. And Smerdyakov saw nothing. He couldn't speak in court anyway. He hasn't fully recovered from that fit he had. Supposing... Supposing Mitya did do it. In madness. In, a, in an attack of complete madness. Would you ever wonder that? If he did? Oh, he keeps telling me he wants to go to Siberia. He wants to be found guilty. He says he's a guilty man. He is not. You believe in him. I try to. Perhaps that's why he turns to them. Ivan and Katya don't. No, they don't. And that makes their company much more bearable than mine. With me believing he can't give up, he would like so much to give up. So, he will either do as they wish, hide behind this doctor to save himself, or walk into the court and declare himself a guilty man, and whatever happens, you must not allow him to do that. It's not me he listens to! Don't worry, Alyosha. I won't let him throw his life away. My life away. If it is to be Siberia, I have sworn I will go with him. I will. He has my life to save as well. I wish Ivan had spoken to me of this. Oh, Katya is at the bottom of everything. You may depend upon that. She wants them both. She will come after you before long. Mitya loves you. He loves you more than anything in the world. I stake my very soul upon that. Go to her house. Find out what she and Ivan are up to. Remember, you are my friend now. Alyosha! 
If I were two foot taller, <sighs> I'd box you around the ears. Walking with that woman through the town, talking to her. Don't you realise that everyone is watching? Everyone. I followed you all the way down the street. What have you got to say for yourself? Good morning, Mrs. Koklakova. You've been avoiding me. Yes. Well, there is no need to make an outcast of yourself. You have many friends in this town. Or well, you would have if you didn't consult with the likes of... Uh, she is my brother's fiancée. Fiancé? <laughs> There's a word. Oh, you look so thin. Motherless boy. I really haven't the time to worry about you. Lisa has been ill. I'm sorry. I tell her. I tell her six times a day the reason Alyosha hasn't called, hasn't asked once about yeah, you... I'll come now. Now? Well, she's in a terrible humour. Forgive me, Lisa. Your mother tells me you've been ill. How are you? What do you think of the chair, Alexei? Not my squeaky old thing, the new one in the corner. Oh. Mother is going to get it carried into the courtroom. She's worried she might faint in an ordinary chair from hearing all the details. Do they give very graphic details? I certainly hope so. She's very excitable. I've embroidered myself a new cushion. When they wheel me in, I will be sitting on it in honour of the occasion. In honour of your family. I have told you a thousand times you are not going to the trial. And I will ignore what you say a hundred million times if needs be. I am going. It is the social event of the season. Do you think me very heartless, Alyosha? Uh, perhaps a little. I meant to say Alexei, not Alyosha. I'm not a child anymore. That's a pity. Why? You were a very tender-hearted child. And you were a kind boy who would never have done a cruel thing to me. You can't imagine how comical you look in that waistcoat. You looked ridiculous in your monk's robes, and now you look comical. You really must make an effort on Monday. They are sending down correspondence from the Moscow and St. Petersburg newspapers for the trial. The trial of the year. Mother has ordered us three new hats each. Oh, I've done nothing of the kind, too. And Alyosha doesn't condemn me. He knows I'm a vain, worldly woman. He also knows how much I care for him. I can walk across the room now. With sticks in the morning. I'm not ill. I'm very glad to hear it. Are you? Well, yes, I suppose you might well be. Who wouldn't rejoice to hear that a young, tender hearted, crippled girl was learning to walk again? It is absolutely no compliment to you. I am sure the elder is praying for her in heaven. I saw you at his funeral. I saw you at your father's funeral as well. What an extraordinary coincidence in both dying almost at the same time. Do you feel that? Do you feel God is testing you? That all these events are a way for God to test his little Russian Job? You're angry with me. Perhaps I deserve it. You offend me even more by mentioning it. I haven't the patience. I shall never have the patience for you. I thought we had a special closeness, Lisa and I. Mm, I don't think she'll marry you now. Not that that wasn't a joke, a sweet little joke. Well, now she's gone, there is something I particularly wanted to ask you. How is Dimitri? <sighs> He's refused to see me all week. Apparently, Ivan is allowed to visit. Well, I have a new theory about it all. Do you want to hear it? Well, uh, perhaps another time. I'm going to go back to the jail. I will force him to talk uh, with Grigori did it. Yes? He did it. After your brother hit him, he was dazed, confused, and in his madness he picked up the pestle your brother dropped and rushed into the house. Did what he did to your poor father. But none of this is what I wanted to talk to you about. It's about Lisa and your brother. You must not allow her to come to the trial. Oh, it is not always easy for parents to control their children, as you know. But it is Ivan I am speaking of. He came to the house the other day. He'd come to call on me and, finding I wasn't home, spent a few minutes talking to Lisa. Well, what could be more ordinary? But this morning, suddenly at breakfast, she turns on me and screams, yes, screams across the table that I must never allow Ivan Fyodorovich to enter this house again. Well, what do you make of that? I'm worried about her. Please, Alyosha, talk to her as a friend. Well, I don't think she wants to talk to me, but... I will try. When I was a child, I used to wish, above all things, to be a tree spirit. I would fall in love with a beautiful woodcutter who would chop me down. I used to cry about it. Delicious tears. 
I sent your brother some sweets. That was kind of you. You don't ask which brother. I know what Mama was talking to you about. One doesn't need to eavesdrop in this house. Everything is so obvious. We won't marry now, will we, Alyosha? And it was such a nice idea. But you are not a woodcutter, however beautiful you are. What are you thinking? How lovely this garden is. You live a privileged life. <laughs> you think I should be ashamed that I'm not poor. I am. You are thinking of that elder of yours. That dream is done. For you, anyway. What does it matter if we sin? If we sin terribly? It matters. Why? <laughs> because then we are condemned by God. You say that like a man sleepwalking. Poor Rally Osher. Perhaps I should marry you. Perhaps we could make ourselves deliciously unhappy and have hundreds of religious scruples every day about everything. I'm so unhappy. You're bored, which is not the same thing. You say that with such a kind smile, I could almost forgive you. Can we talk frankly to one another? Have I ever asked you for anything? Have I? No. Dear Lisa... Don't ask me. Don't ask me that question about Ivan. It is ridiculous. You love me. I will love you all my life. I want you to take this and give it to him. To Ivan. Don't read it. Of course you won't read it. If you gave me a letter to deliver to another woman, I would tear it open in a moment. But you are a good man. No, I'm not. Alyosha, if I asked you to, would you save me? Yes. But from what? What would you save me from? That is the terrible mystery. Go and save your brother. He is the one who needs help. You spend too much time with women. <laughs> Do you like her? Grushenka? Yes. Oh, what a noble answer. Brief and manly. Go. I won't say another word to you. Very well. What a fool I am. Dimitri? Dimitri? Why did you tell the warder not to let me in? Oh, Mitya, won't you speak to me? Have you so completely given up hope? Oh, you look so pale. An old friend came to see me today. Do you remember Rakitin? He forced his way in like you did. God, you'd think a man could be let alone in a prison cell. Do you know what he wanted? He wanted to interview me, to write up my case to launch his literary career. I declined the honour. I also hit him. <laughs> it was a pleasure. My temper doesn't improve in here. I have not learned humility. I haven't. I won't. Will we talk about the trial now, brother? <sighs> will we talk about the plan that Ivan and Katerina have? All that is immaterial. They will condemn me. I long for that. Do you understand why? Yes. Yes? You long for some Change. Rebirth. Resurrection. It is impossible to be a convict without God. And if we have banished him from our minds, our lives, this world of ours, we must seek him in the broken places, in the lost places. Ivan the Revolutionary wants to pull heaven down to earth. I want to raise up hell to heaven. <sighs> what rubbish I talk. I don't think Ivan is a revolutionary anymore. He has lost his faith. I have no idea what he is, or what he's up to. He told me something. He said our father was a pig, but he had the right ideas. He lived entirely for himself. That's, that's wrong. 
That is wrong, isn't it? Yes. What do you think of his plan, his and Catty's plan? Uh, guilty but mad, innocently evil. Well, it's a plan, isn't it? It might work. Do you think it might work? It might. Mm, I don't. Whatever they do, the lawyers, the doctors, let them do their best or their worst. We know how it will end. I suppose there is a chance. Oh, what a torment even the slightest scrap of hope is. What a relief it will be when they condemn me. Tell me this. Do you think Ivan really cares what happens to me? I don't know. She won't give me up. Have you heard that? No, she will follow me, footstep by footstep, all the way to Siberia. Which one? Both of them. My Grushenka and that hellcat, that vixen, that noble creature, Katerina Ivanovna. She will make my trial her martyrdom. And I will bear it. I will grind my teeth, but I will bear it when she gets on the stand and makes her heartfelt, wonderful speeches. Just make sure that you sit where I can see you, little brother. The sight of you might calm me. It might just... Katya and Ivan, both of them believe me guilty. You know that? Yes, I know that. Oh, what a moon-headed idiot you are to believe me innocent. You are the only one in the whole world who does. Why? Listen, I will tell you the final secret. The real master plan. Come closer. I swore to him that I would tell no one. Grushenka knows nothing of this. Katya insisted on that. I can't tell you the details. I've forgotten them all. I forget who I am in here. But I can tell you this. This one word. America. Yes, once the trial is over, once I am found guilty, he plans to get me out of here, out of prison, out of Russia, and all the way to America. <laughs> Laugh, Alyosha, it's funny. Uh, I will become a cowboy uh, with those hats of theirs. But how could he possibly organise it? Uh, the comrades have ways, I presume. Of course, he will need money. A great deal of money, tens of thousands of rubles. How can it work? No, I don't doubt him for that. He has a mind like clockwork, a ticking bomb. He'll do it. He'll risk his own freedom to rescue me. It's a wonderful thing, brotherly love. Now that is my choice. Freedom in America or Siberia. And that's not all. He's willing to come with me. He insists on it. Oh, what a menage! Huh? Me, Katya, and him, and California. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, God, Siberia! Siberia in midwinter would be better. Besides you, you are the one I love. You believe in me. If you did not believe in me, I... Alyosha, stand up. Stand up. Now look me in the eye and swear before God, before his mother, that you do not think I did it. Mitya. Please. I beg you, believe in me. I swear before God, before his holy mother, that I do not believe you killed our father. What a child you are still. <sighs> and yet you strengthen me. I will face what has to be faced. Go to him, go to Ivan, and tell him there will be no Americas for me. I will defend myself, but I will not run away. I will allow them their doctors and their lawyers, but that is all. I'll tell him. But if it was not me, if I did not strike the fatal blow, then who? Ivan? Or you? Well, it was one of us. It was a Karamazov. Don't let them blame Grigori. I won't let that happen. I will find out the truth. Will you? I will find out who killed him. No matter what the cost. In episode three of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Dmitry Karamazov was played by Paul Hilton, Alyosha, Karl Prekop, Grushenka, Katie Kavner, and Makarov, 
by Mark Straker. Lisa was Emma Noakes. Mrs. Koklakova, Rachel Atkins. Grigori, Desmond McNamara. Andre, Philip Fox. Trifon, Paul Richard Biggin. Muzielovich, Sam Dale. The Constable, Saikit Ahmed. And the Revelers, Bethan Walker and Miranda Keeling. The Gypsy Dancers were played by The Virtuosos. The Brothers Karamasov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Original music was by David Pickvance. And the directors were Colin Guthrie and Mark Beebe. Fyodorovich Karamazov to see you. What are you pretending to be? An English butler? Get out. This is my house. He is my servant. And we are all your servants. Sit down, Alyosha. I want to speak with you, Ivan. Katya. Are you going to order me from my own drawing room now? I need to talk to him. The trial is on Monday and I've only just heard that you have taken charge of Mitya's defence. I'm trying to save him. Of course you are. I didn't involve you with our plans. Because you wouldn't approve. He knew you wouldn't approve, but what other defence does he have? Only a madman would murder his father. The man we've hired, he, he is the best doctor in Moscow, the very best. He will convince the jury. Mitya didn't murder our father. Ivan, I would like to talk to you. I will leave if you insist that Mitya is my fiancé oh, still. Stay, by all means. She has a right to stay. She's paying all the bills. Lawyers, doctors, everyone's. All this despite the fact Mitya loves another. What a noble soul you are, Katerina Ivanovna. You see the way he speaks to me? I do. I don't mind it. I can bear anything. You interrupted us, Alyosha. We were in the midst of another, yet another discussion of Mitya. His ruin, his redemption. His redemption. How beautifully she speaks of that. The eloquence of her voice. A man could listen to her all night, all day, like a nightingale. What is it you want me to do? Tell me, you can't want me to abandon your brother now, at the hour of his need. How could I want that? No, of course I don't. I don't want to deprive you of your hour of glorious, humiliating shame when you stand in the witness box and reveal all the intimacies of your heart. Everyone's heart. Mine, even. Will you tell them that I love you? Will you tell them that you offered yourself to my brother as a holy act, of course, as a willing sacrifice? How can you say such things? How, how can you torment me? That was a long time ago, before all this. All our histories are like that now. Before the murder, after the murder. Alyosha, I will do anything to save Mitya. My other feelings have no effect on that, I swear it. You can trust me. Do you trust me? I trust you. I take my leave. An hour every morning in her company is my ration. More than that, I cannot endure. Oh, I wish. Don't make wishes. What's the point? This isn't a fairy tale. No one will end up living happily ever after. I've never seen him so agitated. So unhappy. Katerina. You see how it is for me. I am caught. Trapped. What a terrible dilemma. I talked a lot about noble sacrifice. About rescuing your poor brother, poor Dimitri, and, and yet it was all nonsense. I never meant a word of it. I like to say it. I like to feel my spirit stretched to some wonderful ideal. But now it is real ruin that faces him, real desolation. And all my words have come back to me. I don't love him. I love... But in honour, in truth, against the deepest impulses of my heart, I cannot, I cannot abandon Dimitri now, can I? You don't say anything. I don't know what to say. Do you think I'm still play-acting? Quite honestly, I think you probably are. <laughs> but, on the other hand, you're probably entirely sincere as well. You understand me. Excuse me. I must go. I must talk with Ivan. You took your time. 
What did she say to you? We must talk. Oh, indeed we must. But why? Why is that all we do? Talk. Tell me this, little brother. Do you think a person can know, can actually experience going mad? I wonder about that, too. I hope it just happens like falling off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, suddenly. <laughs> but somehow I doubt it. Will we go out and get drunk? I have a letter for you from Lisa Cocker. Uh, she's another one, a slut. Well, I won't read it. Oh. You've gone white. What's the matter? Do you have some feeling for this girl? Really? And... She sends you to give me a letter. <laughs> oh, they are magnificent. Ivan, what is the matter with you? Lisa's a child. Sixteen. A child. She's been ill, and if she has some feeling for you... For me? I know what that feeling is. She wants a racy little flirtation. You must have disappointed her, Alyosha. Good for you. Let's not speak of it. What did she say to you? Do you mean her or... Katerina. Of course, Katerina. Don't be stupid. I must ask you not to talk to me like that. <laughs> Why not? What'll you do? Fight a duel with me? Hit me over the head with something? Oh, tradition's important. Hmm? Let it be a blow to the head. Oh, Alyosha. I saw Mitya earlier. He told me about your plan, about escaping to America if it goes badly for him. He wasn't supposed to tell you. He doesn't want to do it. He'll allow you to use this doctor and to have your lawyer in the courts represent him. But that's all. If he is found guilty, he will endure his fate. Hmm. Very well. He knows that at the moment things do not look well for him. Ivan, listen! We must talk. He knows, everyone knows, the chances... There are no chances for him. They'll find him guilty. For the very simple reason, he is guilty. He's a monster. No. Between ourselves, we can say that. He's a monster who killed a monster. And you and me, me especially, what are we? Monsters. You didn't kill him. What? You didn't do it kill father. <laughs> Is the boy delirious? Of course I didn't kill him. I was on the train to Moscow. Why did you go on the train that night? We were talking early that evening. You didn't tell me you were leaving. Uh, you actually think I, I will account for my movements to you? You were on a train to Moscow. I was drunk, asleep, in a chair in Grushenka's house. In Grushenka's house? Alyosha! I'm genuinely shocked. She wasn't there. Still? Yes. Why did you go on the train that night? I was lucky. Otherwise, who knows, they might have arrested me. They would certainly have suspected me. Oh, but Mitya is altogether a more satisfactory prisoner. With me, the whole affair would have taken on a political dimension. A guardian angel protected you and put you on that train? Oh, not an angel, I can assure you of that. Smedyakov. Thank you. Thank you? Why do you say that? You think I've told you something important? A man must be on his guard against you. Let me say it again. I had nothing to do with his death. When you're alone, you don't believe that. You don't believe it. You think you did it because you wanted to do it. It's the same thing, wanting to do something and doing uh, it. Is that what you think? Yes. I think that about myself. Oh, I thought you were the good one among us. Did you want him dead as well? Of course. The Karamazovs are all monsters. I should listen to myself. Do you see him? Have you seen him? Who? Ivan? What's the matter? Ah, I'm not a child. I'm not a peasant to see ghosts. But I've seen him. Father. Oh, my poor brother. Oh, you're very... Kind. Do you know what I'd like to do now, at this minute? Do you know what I feel about your pity? Let me tell you this. Katerina has a piece of paper that will prove mathematically that Dmitri did it. The murder. Uh, I mean logically, not mathematically. What do you say to that? I don't believe it. Oh, he doesn't believe it. Tell me this. What do you believe? Who do you think did kill our father who art in hell, I hope? Who do you think did kill him? It had to be one of us. Us Karamazovs? Yes, I think so. Not Mitya? No. Not me? No. Nope. What are you saying? Are you saying that you did it? No. Do you still believe in God after all this? Yes. But perhaps he's not the God I imagined. I want nothing more to do with you. I want nothing more to do with your... 
conscience or your god. I will try to help Mitya. I gave Katya up for him, although he spits in her face. Oh, she loves that. I spit in her face now as well. I spit venom. I want her to suffer. Ivan. Don't touch me. Don't speak another word to me or I will strike you down. I will strike you down. Go and see Smerdjakov. Who? Smerdjakov. He's ill. He's been ill since that night. What has he to do with this? Go and see him. Ask him. He will talk to you. If Smerdjakov is that ill, why isn't he in a hospital? We tried to take him. Flung himself on the floor and had another fit. Terrible fit. Thought his throat would burst open with the screams. No one comes to see him. I myself come only every second day. His mother sees him. Perhaps I'd better not disturb him. And don't be afraid. He speaks of you. What does he say? He talks about you a lot. About me? Why? Hasn't Alyosha been to see him? Not once. He won't come near this side of the house. Smerdyakov is a scoundrel, a buffoon. But I'm glad that one of you has come to see my son. Forgive us. My mafia does my forgiving for me these days. Don't be afraid. Ivan Fyodorovich. Why would I be afraid? You're not infectious, are you? Epilepsy isn't like typhoid. Perhaps not. Of course not. I am an ill-educated man. I don't know what is infectious and what is not. Ask me then. Ask you what? How you are? To be honest, I don't greatly care how you are. Did you know you have a little tick under your left eye when you are nervous? What is the point of this? Don't go. Don't go, <laughs> sir. You are meat and drink to me, sir. You are the Lord God of hosts, I swear it. Hosanna, Hosanna. You're delirious. <laughs> it's true, though. You are my lodestone, sir. Why would I exaggerate now? Now that I'm dying? You're not dying. You're malingering. You've been in bed all these weeks. But keeping you... out of harm's way. And the police did. They're not idiots for all we would wish them to be. They couldn't quite believe it was a coincidence that I had a fit. Not just an ordinary fit, but the king and queen of seizures. And knocked myself unconscious the very night your poor dad copped it. But they never broke me, sir. They never wavered me. I held up. Every time they asked me, I said the same thing, the same words. They brought doctors in. Your name was never mentioned by me, sir. And why would my name be mentioned by you? I never told them that I predicted it all to you. I told you the very night before it happened that I'd have a fit. The night I put you on the train. You can't predict fits, sir. A first-year student knows that. How could I know I was going to be ill? I even told you it'd be in the cellar, that I'd fall down the cellar steps and knock my head. You can see the scar, if you like. I don't want to look at the scar. You're having a hard enough job just looking at me at all, aren't you, Ivan Fyodorovich? I'm as handsome as any of you. And I got you on that train. Never forget that. I made sure you were safe. No one suspects you. What nonsense are you talking? Perhaps it's me that's delirious. I'm lying in a bed somewhere in the midst of the most fearful nightmare. I think that often. Do you suppose we're lying side by side? I could bear it better if we were lying side by side. Your head's hurting, isn't it? You're sweating. He comes to see me, you know. Who? What are you talking about? You know, him. Why me? You're as guilty as I am. 
You left him to his fate. You left knowing he'd be killed. That's why I told you about the fit, the cellar, to see how you'd react. To see if you wanted it to happen. If you wanted him dead. Are you admitting to me that you killed him? That's not the sort of thing a sane man, an intelligent man, would admit. Except under torture. But I would admit anything you like if you tortured me. Would you like to torture me? Sir? You're an insect. A vile, crawling thing. If another man were to say that to me, I might smile. But I'd plot a little bit of vengeance for it. You, I forgive. I forgive utterly with both hands and a full heart. You wanted him dead. He is dead. Don't ask for more. Poor Dimitri. Do you mind if I call him Dimitri? I should call him Dmitri Fyodorovich, but somehow I don't want to. How he must hate prison. How he must hate it. He despised me. I despise me. But you... I despise you as well, believe me. Yes, but I was of use to you. We all crave to be of use. I'm a worker and a peasant, sir. Salt of the earth, son of this Russian earth, and son, illegitimate son of the village idiot. I know my pedigree. I know it. I'll go and tell the police. I will. Do that. I don't mind what you do as long as you're happy. Long ago I decided to love you. To love you like a brother. What will they say when you tell them, I wonder? When you tell them everything? Will you tell them that there is no God and because there is no God all things are permissible? What? You said that to me once. I didn't. Take a drink of water, sir. You were discussing philosophy with your house servant. He was in awe of you. The educated Moscow man. Might I say something to you, Ivan Fyodorovich? It seems I have no choice but to listen to you. Now that it is all permissible, I, who have been the subject of your experiment, come back. To report to my master. I'm not your master. Have strength. Have pity. Listen to me. Now I've done the thing. If I did it, I admit nothing. But now it's done. I discover this beautiful fact. If it is all permissible, then equally it is all meaningless. I am endlessly eating that dead thought. And it is endlessly eating me, remorselessly. But there is no remorse in me, or in my conscience. Do you know what that feels like? Do you, sir? Speak. I wanted him dead. He read my heart. You were my instrument. I admit it. I had reasons of my own as well. I had more courage than all of you, than all the Karamazovs. I alone dared to do what you all dreamed of. And what a nice nightmare I've landed you all in. <laughs> Off already? I've more to tell you. Details. But you don't look well. Perhaps I was infectious after all. Come back soon. And tell Mafia I'd like pancakes for lunch. Oh, I caught something. Absolutely caught something. <clears throat> Ill. Fever. Oh, my forest. Shit. Ringing wet. I'll just lie down for ten minutes. Five minutes. And I'll go to the police. How did I get back to my lodgings? Oh, devil only knows. You walked? 
Most people thought you were drunk. What will I say to the police, though? What will they think? I've no evidence that Smetchakov did it. They might think the whole thing's a plot to save Mitya. They might. And Smetchakov as good as told me he'd implicate me in the plot to m murder, to <laughs> kill. You are implicated. You're the sleeping partner. I'll be better when I've had a sleep. My head's like an engine, like a furnace. Do you have something for me? What would I have for you? Medicine. Medicine? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you imagine that? Something to make me better. I can't lie here sick. I have things to do. I think you have to help me, Doctor. You think I'm a doctor? Oh, I see why. My brown jacket. And for some reason you associate brown jackets with doctors. Intriguing. If you're not a doctor, who the devil are you? The devil. <laughs> That's all nonsense. I must, if I'm to be understood by the likes of you. I'm hallucinating again. You have such a bad conscience, it's a pleasure to be around. Twist and turn, twist and turn. Trust me, I am the devil, fleshed out by you and wearing this rather unattractive brown jacket. If you are, you're a mere figment of my imagination. I object to mere. Of course, the way I look is entirely your responsibility, but I am more than mere appearance. Ask Alyosha. Oh, don't speak of him, Lady Miller. He's losing his faith, you know. But he still believes in me. Bless him. One day, you never know, I might count him as one of my own. He's an idealist, like yourself, but he has better manners. Would you like to talk to your father? Oh, no. He's eager to speak with you, eager as anything, keen as mustard. I don't believe in you. Never mind. I believe in you. These things don't have to be reciprocal. Like love. Oh, what do you want with me? What do you want with me? You imagined me. For an atheist, you're awfully obsessed by all this religious hogwash. The devil doesn't use words like that. I have no dignity. <laughs> Sad, but true. I'm going to think about something else. It's a shame you won't pray to God. I'm curious about him. Does he really exist? Perhaps he might appear. You'd have a thrilling religious experience and turn into a little saint. Poor Alyosha would be jealous. You'd like that. If you mention Alyosha again, I will kill you. There's one of you in prison? Oh, he has the funniest ideas, Mitya. He thinks that suffering will redeem him, that Siberia will somehow set him free. The fool. I enjoy him. And you, of course, I like you. I love you. Such cruelty, such coldness, such malice. Yes. I am all of those things. Cruel, cold, malicious, lustful. There's a cure for it all, you know. My patent medicine. A nice little knife, a tight little rope, a lead bullet buried deep into the brain and then Perfect peace. And then who would you have to torment? Dear boy, you breed like bacteria. Do you have such a thing as a cigar or a drop of something? It's a cold night. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Don't apologise. Under no circumstances apologise. I never have, and look what happened to me. Prince of the world. Would you like that? Would you like me to tempt you? I'm ill, aren't I? Very ill. He has more courage than you. Who? Poor Smerdyakov. There he goes now. Dingle, dangle. What do you mean? Will I stroke your head? Will I comfort you? Would you like me to sing you a lullaby? Will I get your mother here and make her sing for you? Leave her in peace. Poor dead dear. What a life she had. What a life she had with your father. How she despaired. That's the worst sin of all, they tell me. Oh. 
I don't want her here. What have you to do with my mother? Leave her alone. For pity's sake, leave her alone. Can you hear me? I won't listen to you, I won't. Oh, go away. For God's sake, go away. I can't, Ivan, you have to listen to me. Yeah. Drink this. <laughs> Are you all right? I'll send for a doctor. Oh, no, no doctor. Did you hear her? Who? Mother. Oh, mother. She was singing to me. I don't remember her voice. Stay with me a while. Don't let him come back. Ivan, there is something I must tell you. Oh, is it morning? Can't be. They found Smerdyakov. What do you mean? Poor Grigory found him and sent for me. Smerdyakov has hung himself. There's a letter in his pocket addressed to you. No, 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 rest. You need... We have to get the letter. We have to open it before the police get there. Come on. Come in, masters. Come in. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, I don't know what to say. Say nothing. He loved the way you talk. He used to write down the things you said in a notebook. Come and see him. Don't worry, I've cut him down like one of the winter hams. My boy. I won't come in. My mafia will want to get in and wash him soon. Have you sent for the police? I sent for you. This is your house. This is your affair. Go in. He looks ugly, but you'll forgive him that. Before we go into that room, there's something I must ask you. I'd rather get this over with. Then we can talk. If I... I shouldn't have let you come. How do you feel? Uh, a little light-headed. <laughs> the devil paid me a visit last night, Alyosha, just before you came. I'll go in on my own. I'll get the letter. Sit here. He told me you were losing your faith. Is that true? Is this the right time for this conversation? Yes. The Elder sent me out into the world to help. To help my family. To prevent a disaster. Well, I haven't succeeded. My father's dead. My brother on trial for his murder. And now, smudge your What about me? Am I unscathed? Don't you pity me and what I've become? What have you become? The way I treat Katerina. The way I spoke of poor Lisa. It reminded me of him. I am worse than my father. I'm a clever man, Alyosha. The cleverest of all the Karamazovs. Look what I've done. Smerdyakov. Tell me. Do you love this Lisa? I'd like to. I might have done, but now... Why can't you love her? What's your sin, Alyosha? Spiritual pride. I wanted to be a good man. That above anything, above anyone. We must go in the room now. Wait. Wait. When I spoke to Smedyakov, he told me. He told me he had killed our father. He actually said it? Yes. In so many words, yes. You knew it, didn't you? That's why you sent me to him. Why didn't you go yourself? He wouldn't have spoken to me. And why do you think he spoke to me? Let's go in and do what we must. He did it for my sake. That's what he said. Or under my influence. He made sure I went on the train to Moscow that night so that no one would suspect me. But I should have. I should have suspected me. I should have suspected him. I did. I knew. I could have stopped him. I didn't. It's a hard choice for you now. Do you want to sacrifice one brother for the sake of another? I'll confess. Don't worry. I will confess. Ivan, you are not a murderer. Let's go in. Oh. Oh. Where's the letter? I don't know. Open the window. Mm. Don't look at his face. 
Uh, didn't Gregory tell you what it was? He said he found it in his pocket. Perhaps it's still there. Uh, I'll have a look. No, I'll do that. Please. Oh. It isn't here. Is there nothing one can do about his face? After a while, it will look different, more relaxed. Oh, what a happy thought. After the hard struggle of life, there's a brief interlude in which we are permitted by bountiful nature to relax before we rot. I found it. He seems to be doing that already. It's addressed to you. Good God. Is there no note? Nothing. Just money. Just a handful of dirty notes, not silver coins, no symbolism. How much is there? You know as well as I. Three thousand rubles. The money father had ready for Grushenka. He stole it. It's to prove to us that he killed our father. Well, give it to me. It's no use. There's no note. No explanation. If we take it to the police, they'll think the money's ours. That we're slandering a dead man to save our brother. That's what I'd think. Taunting us. Smedjakov was a bastard. Yes. We know the truth, but they will still find Mitya guilty. Yes. The devil told me this would happen. Let's get out. He hinted at this. He told me Smerjakov would hang himself. I should learn to trust him. There's no point in telling me not to come in. Oh. I'll give you one minute to get dressed. Well, come in now if you like. Well, you're already up. No, I see you never went to bed. Oh, this is a dreadful business. Oh, could you keep your voice down a little? I've only just got him to sleep. Who? Ivan. Oh. He has a fever. You know the front door of your house is wide open. I just marched in. Um, is there something you wanted, Mrs Cocklico? I would not have intruded today of all days, the first day of the trial. Now, is it true that Smerdyakov hanged himself? I have told Lisa nothing, and you mustn't say a word to her about it. We're all having nightmares. He played the guitar, apparently, Smerdyakov. Ludicrous for a man in his station in life. Still... Suicide, it's a dreadful thing. I had to come, Alexei. Oh, don't look at me that way. She said she would come by herself. She would roll herself down the street in her wheelchair and scream under your window until you came down to talk to her. She would have done it too. We both know that. She must speak with you. She's downstairs. Wait here with him until I come back. If he asks, tell him that the doctor won't come. Promise me that. Well, doesn't he like doctors? They make him nervous. Oh, I'd not like that. Her leg was the size of a mountain, but still she... What time see. is it? Two more hours. Yes. It will be a relief when it starts. What will he plead? You must be brave. Now, go downstairs and be kind to my Lisa. <clears throat> stay with him. Don't let him come to the courthouse. Tell him I said he was to stay here. But then I'll miss it. I'll miss everything. Do this for me. You're a kind woman. Oh, I wish I wasn't. Lisa? Lisa, where are you? Lisa! Here I am, behind the door. Standing up. I was going to jump out and surprise you. You must help me walk back to my chair. Yes, of You took too long. I'm tired. I won't be able to walk without help now. All right. Not that arm. Oops. This one. Thank you much. Okay. Are you angry with me? No. That's because you don't care about me. If you cared about me at all, you'd be furious. Playing hide and seek at a time like this. I would like nothing better than to play a nice game of hide and seek at the moment. Is he still in the house? The dead man. It's very gloomy in here. Let's go out onto the veranda and listen to the birds sing. Mother thinks I know nothing about it, but of course I do. Did you see the body? Yes. Was his tongue sticking out? No, he was... Did he smell? 
A little, perhaps. Not as badly as that precious elder of yours? No. The one you loved? The one who loved you? The one who prayed for you? Yes, he did that. But I still can't walk properly. You're better than you were. You're not, though. You look perfectly ordinary now in that <sighs> waistcoat. I can't imagine you in those monk's robes anymore. It's a shame. Did you give Ivan my letter? Ivan is ill. Did you? He tore it up without reading it. Did he? Yes. He's very handsome. Mm. Are you in love with him now? No. I was never in love with him. Darling Catcher flits from one to the other of you, Karamasso, so I thought, why not? Aren't I a woman too? Nearly. Weren't you even a bit jealous? It would have been nice to marry you. It's not impossible that we would have been happy. I do love you. In a large, meaningless way. And the way God loves us all. It's not enough. What's wrong with you, Alyosha? Change the subject. Have the decency to change the subject. Tell me something shocking. I will, if you like. Yes. What? Yes? Smerdyakov killed my father. How very convenient. Is that what you're going to say in court? It's the truth. It may be, but it's awfully convenient as well. Did he leave a letter confessing? Oh, he did. Show me, I must read it. Not a note, an envelope. An envelope with 3,000 rubles in it. I see. It's the money my father had in his room ready for Grushenka. Yes, I know. Do you really like that Grushenka? Would you like her to wash your feet with her perfumed hair? Like Mary Magdalene? He left the money so that we would know he did it. We would know, but no one would believe us. We can't use it in court to save Mitya. No, I, I see that. Why did he kill your father? Is that the question? No. The real question is, why did he kill himself? Some people might suspect him, but Dmitri is the one standing trial. He'd got away with it. He committed a terrible crime. Better to be condemned as Mitya will be, by the world, than by one's own conscience. Is it? If one had got away with it... Ah, it was the worst crime in the world. Unendurable. Read this. Re read what? <laughs> You said there wasn't a note, only this money. Read the envelope. To my brother Ivan. Do you see? To my brother Ivan. He was our brother. Ivan's brother, and mine, and Mitya's. My God. His mother was the village idiot. No one knew how she became pregnant, who the impregnator was. Grigori took his master's bastard and raised him. Father slept with a village idiot. With relish, I should imagine. It was the kind of thing he liked to do, to outrage his own sensibilities. <sighs> I shouldn't talk Ooh. of that to you. The innocent virgin. Alyosha, are you sure of this? One of the monks in the monastery hinted it to me, months ago. One of those that hated the elder. Now, I thought it was just malice. I wanted to think that. But it was true. He is our brother. Was. I've told no one of this. You expect me to be discreet? Mm, for a while. But the trial, Dimitri... How do I prove any of this? The world wants Dimitri found guilty. Dimitri does himself. And poor Ivan, he's half mad with shame. I'm a boy! Who will listen to a boy willing to say anything to save his brothers? And the fact is, I am willing to say anything. I'd say all of this even if it wasn't true. God wants both the guilty and the innocent to suffer in order to be redeemed. Oh. There are times, frankly, when I get sick and tired of people talking about God, redemption and all that stuff. Let's listen to the birds sing, then. Let us be quiet a moment. We're starting soon. There's nothing to be going shoving. Look at it. Seats in there are going for 10 rubles. Proper theatre prices. Moscow theatre. 10 rubles? Well, 15 for front row. But mind yourself, if you fall, 
You'll be trampled. Hey, I think they've started. Prisoner at the bar, do you understand the indictment? Have you read it and examined it? Certainly, certainly. Prisoner at the bar, do you plead guilty or not guilty? I am guilty of many things. Depravity, drunkenness, and the most terrible thoughts. I wanted him dead. I admit that, frankly. Oh, you should be ashamed of yourselves coming to watch this, to gloat at me. You should be ashamed. You're right. You're right. I won't be provoked. Oh, this damn collar. It's too tight. I'm sorry, Your Honour. They have me dressed like a doll. Why the devil am I wearing these gloves? You're going to reprimand me, Judge. Quite rightly. There's no need. I hate being reprimanded. To the indictment, the prisoner at the bar declares on his oath, on his word of honour, that he is not guilty. I am not guilty of the murder, of the theft. Dmitry Fyodorovich is a scoundrel, but he is not a thief. He is not a murderer, no. We will proceed with the evidence of the witnesses. It is the understanding of this court that one of the witnesses took his own life last night. The servant, Smedjakov, will not appear. Dead? Smedjakov? Hug himself! To a dog, the death of a dog. I am Mr. Fetukovich, Dmitry Fyodorovich's lawyer, and it is my turn to ask you questions. Do you understand? I understand. Let me first express my sympathies for the tragic death of your son. Let's get on with it. She wants me home. His mother. I will indeed uh, get on with it. How many glasses had you drunk on the night of the murder before you were struck by an unknown assailant? I'd had a glass. A single glass? Good. Uh, vodka or raw spirit? I brew it myself. Still, a single glass, even of the strongest home brew, won't befuddle a man too much. One glass. Maybe I had more. So, you were asleep, drunk, you heard a noise and rushed into the garden. It was dark. Somehow, you noticed your master's private door to the outside was open. Uh, you told the police that, didn't you? I saw it. It was open. How is your eyesight, by the way? Can you see how many fingers I'm holding up? God gave us all the same numbers of fingers, rich and poor alike. <laughs> Bravo, Grigori. Good and faithful servant. Don't let this dirty lawyer upset you. You speak out. My client is distraught, Your Honour. I am not. Stop harrying, Grigori. If you are my lawyer, then I order you to stop. Uh, don't look at Katharina Ivanovna. She may pay the bills, but I am the one on trial. Not her. You obey me, villain. <laughs> Dmitri Fyodorovich, yes. it is this man's evidence that he saw you coming from inside the house after murdering your father. Oh. Do you understand? Yes, I must destroy his credibility. I must. No, Grigori, you are dismissed. I go home. Mourn for your son. Pray for me. I'll tell Mafia to pray for you. I won't do it. Can I go, then? You may be recalled at a later date. You can go. Let me warn you, Mr Karamazov. I won't test your patience again, Your Honour. It was my intention to call Ivan Fyodorovich, my clan's brother, next, but I have been informed he is indisposed. Very ill, in fact. What's wrong with Ivan? Alyosha! I would be very happy to give my evidence next. It's the doctor, is it? Buffoon number of symptoms that allow one to reach the ineluctable conclusion that Dmitri Fyodorovich performed the actions on the night in question in a state of separation from his moral being. He has no recollection of the events because he, the conscious man, was not there. Are you saying he was possessed? On the contrary, dispossessed. See, judge, it's nonsense. Nonsense. I am not a golem, sir. I am a man, like you are. Go back to Moscow. Go back to Berlin. Of course. Initially, the patient always rejects the diagnosis. He's not the only one. <laughs> Lunch, I think. You must answer the question. He told me. I knew he was very angry with father. He had reason to be. Good reason. And he threatened to kill your father, yes? You must answer me. He didn't mean it. 
But you admit he said it. Well, he was provoked, very provoked. And at the time he said it, did you think he was bluffing or joking, or did you think he meant it? I think he believed he meant it. And perhaps I did as well. At the time. You thought him capable of murdering his father? Your father? Yes. But he didn't do it. I know that. You know that? How? Because I know who did kill my father. It was our house servant, Smerdjakov. I see. It is the truth. It's easy for men of our class to accuse the servants of all kinds of misdemeanors. But this is murder. We must have proof. What is your proof, Alexei Fyodorovich? I'm afraid I have no proof. None that a court of law would accept. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Karamazov. Your loyalty to your brother does you credit. Judge, you must believe me. I swear to this before God. Ayosha, you are a saint. I am a sinner. Don't be upset. No one can save me. Who would want to? Send me to Siberia. This instant. They can't shut old Misha up, can they? I heard that Smerdjikov cut his throat and wrote out his confession in his own blood. Well, maybe he had help cutting yeah, it. maybe. Those Karamazovs, they're capable of anything. Hey, that's, uh, that's the beauty, the fiancé. I considered the 3,000 rubles I gave to Dmitri Fyodorovich to be a loan. Uh, no, no, you, you gave him the money to send to your sister. He stole it. You've said this yourself in public, in front of witnesses on many occasions. It was a loan, and one that I'm certain Dmitri would have repaid. And if he had not, it is no one's business how matters of that kind stand between me and my husband. Your husband? I am vowed to him. We are married in the eyes of God. I will say now as well that never, never once in my presence did he threaten to harm his father in any way, despite his father's terrible treatment of Thank him. Thank you, madam. Perhaps this court will hear things about my fiancé, my husband, private matters involving people, females. Let me say, let me make clear now before the court that I, of course, and absolutely forgive and will forever forgive him. I forgive him for his indiscretions. Oh. Yes, I do. I am not ashamed. I am your wife. If your honor would call for a priest, I would marry him now. Knowing all I know, knowing everything, he is innocent of the crime of murder and I will prove it with my own body. Would I offer my hand to a killer? For the love of God, will you be quiet? Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. I have spoken. What kind of a question is that? I'm merely asking if you're dressed in black, uh, very fetchingly in black, because you're mourning the death of your patron, Fyodor Karamazov. He was not my patron, whatever that means. And no, I am not in mourning for him. He was not your patron. Would you prefer the word protector, then? Talk as you like. Use whatever words you wish. If you mean, did I have relations with him? No, I did not. He pestered me. He wanted me. But I don't sleep with every man who asks me. I don't wish to embarrass you. Oh, you do. That is your dearest wish. And tonight you will smoke your cigar with a smirk on your face, thinking of how you humiliated me. God protect me. Oh, it's a pig. It's a complete pig. I am to blame. I am to blame for it all. I drove them mad. Both of them. You would understand that. The pleasure of tormenting those in your power. Yes, I did that. I am ashamed of that. Those are matters for your conscience, not this court. If the court is not interested in these matters, in justice, in honour and truth, then the court should be ashamed of itself. Bravo, my darling. Oh, I love you. Did you hear that, Miss Katya? I see you've got yourself a ringside seat and a nice lace hanky. Weep away. No one is paying any attention to you. You must not insult the other witnesses, madam. Oh, she's my sister. Yes, she is. Aren't you, dear one? She begged me to give her her man back, but he was not hers. He pitied her. I pity her. Do you hear? I pity you. To move on, I have two questions. Can you repeat to the judge, uh, to us all, what you said when Dmitri Fyodorovich was arrested? No. I can't. I can't remember. Ah. You shouted out, send us both to Siberia. We're both guilty of this crime. Did you say that? It certainly sounds like an outburst I might make. 
Yes, I will admit to it if you like. Clearly then, at that moment, you believed him guilty of the murder. You felt some sense of responsibility, quite rightly, quite rightly, given your behaviour, and you cried out that you too wished to suffer the consequence of your sins. Are you enjoying yourself saying that to me? You believed at that moment that he was guilty. You believed it then, and I venture to suggest that you believe it now. No, I don't. I will not be crushed by you, Mr Prosecutor. I cried out that we were as guilty as one another, my meteor and I. He is mine for all the lace hankies in the world. Yes, we are guilty. As guilty as one another. Exactly. So that must mean, as I am innocent of this murder, that he also is innocent. That is what I said. That is what I meant. Make way! Make way! Oh. I'm here at last! I couldn't find a comb, Your Honour. You're ill. You're too ill to be here. Let me explain to the judge. Who are you? It's me, Alyosha. No, no, you're an imposter. My brother's a monk. I've left the monastery. What is going on, please? Um, I'm here to give my evidence. If it's so, please, Your Gracious Majesty. Uh, uh, I'm joking. Uh, I'm joking. Uh, look, ask me anything. Ask me what you like. Um, oh, I can have a glass of water. If someone would give me a He's glass. He's going to faint. No, no, I'm not. I'm not going to faint. I'm going to tell the truth. I must tell you the truth. My evidence is important. What is it you have to say, sir? Uh, Are you wasting the court's time? He's ill, Your Honour. Perhaps tomorrow, my No, no, no. No better today. My father was alive some weeks ago and then he died. Smedjakov was alive yesterday. He's dead today. In fact, we'd better hurry. Who knows how long I have. Do you have anything in particular to tell the court about the matter? The tragic murder of your dear father? The tragic murder of... Your Honour, you can see he doesn't know what he's saying. He hardly knows where he is. I know where I am. I know who's on trial here. We are princes, my brothers and I. Princes. We are living in a fairy tale. Absolutely in a fairy tale. Once you understand that, everything's clear. There were three brothers who lived in a land in the grip of an evil king. Dimitri. <laughs> is the eldest brother, the bluff, impulsive one, brave, a fighter. Oh, but he's not the giant killer. In all the stories, it's the youngest son, the good boy who's kind to animals, whom everyone loves, who kills the monster and sets us all free. But Alyosha, <laughs> he's innocent. He's not the hero of this story. I am. It's me. What are you saying? I have the money. <laughs> I have the 3,000 rubles that were stolen from my father's room the night he was killed. Bailiff, take them. You are saying this is the money? How did you come by it? It was left to me by Smerdyakov. He killed my father, and last night he killed himself. We have heard this story before. Did he leave a note, a confession? He left the money. It was a message to me. The envelope was addressed to me. Uh, strange thing is, I, 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 I can't find it. Uh, Alyosha, do you have the envelope? He was with me, Your Honour. He will verify every word I say, but oh, but oh, all this is beside the point. It's nonsense. Yeah, I agree with you. It's nonsense. Because, of course, it wasn't Smedjakov who killed my father. It was me. It was me! The middle prince, the clever one, the sly one, huh? Who's in love with a beautiful witch and has no honour. No honour, that's me. Smedjakov was an instrument, that's all. An instrument in my hands. I put him to work. Is there a man in the room who has not desired the death of his father, huh? I desired it. Oh, how I desired it. He doesn't know what he's saying. You are overwrought. Look at them. Look at them enjoying all this. Uh, I like Nero. I love Nero. If the mob had one head, I would streak it off. 
I pretended I loved you, 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 you rubble. I wrote such lovely words about you, about your essential goodness, about how one day noble men would lift you from the mire and you would be as gods. You're beasts! Oh, 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 nothing else, do you hear me? This is madness. I won't let you do this. I won't let you sacrifice yourself. I confess before God that I killed my father. Take this young man and arrest him. Oh, you had better do that. Oh, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my cancerous little heart. Oh, get your hands off me. Hold that prisoner. Oh, Ivan! What's happening? Why have they arrested Ivan? He's innocent. It's that thug that's the murderer. Thug! I thought Dimitri was your husband. I thought your ladyship was vowed to him before God. Don't you address me. Don't even speak Katerina, to me. Katerina, I beg you, sit down. Sit down and be calm. We can't allow this to happen. Help me, Alexei. The judge will take no notice of what Ivan says. He's ill. Anyone can see he's ill. Please, Katya, you will make matters worse. Ivan, Ivan, I will save you. It's here in my pocket. What? The letter. The letter from Dimitri that proves he's guilty. I held it in my hand as I stood and lied for him earlier. I perjured myself for him. Now I will tell the truth. Prosecutor, whatever your name is. Madam? I must speak with you. What is our little Tsarina up to now? Your Honor, I must speak. I must be heard. Recall me to the witness box. I have the proof. The incontrovertible proof that Dmitri Fyodorovich is guilty of the murder of his father. I have it here in his own hand in black and white. A full confession! Bitch! In episode four of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Dmitri Karamazov was played by Paul Hilton, Ivan, Nicholas Bolton, Alyosha, Karl Prekop, Katerina, Juliet Aubrey, Grushenka, Katie Kavanagh, and The Devil by Sam Dale. Lisa was Emma Noakes, Mrs. Koklakova, Rachel Atkins, Smyadjokov, Joseph Kloska, Grigori, Desmond McNamara, The Judge, Ian Masters, The Prosecutor, Philip Fox, and Fetchukovich by Mark Straker. The bystanders were Paul Richard Biggin and Saket Ahmed, and the spectators, Bethan Walker and Miranda Keeling. The Brothers Karamazov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray, original music by David Pickvance, and the directors were Mark Beebe and Colin Guthrie. anything but angry but uh, I swear to you dear Alyosha I did my best to stop Ivan from coming to the trial he's not thinking about that not at the moment are you you should go home I will not go home there was no one in the house to help me no one he got up he insisted I, I could see he was still ill feverish it's not your fault oh I told him you'd asked me to stay with him that you'd left instructions that he was not to come here he didn't even bother to argue. He just kept asking me for a comb, of all things. What happened? What did Ivan do? He gave evidence. And? He accused himself of the murder. <gasps> How extraordinary! Why did he do that? I don't think he even knew where he was. The judge should never have let him speak. Of course he had to speak. Everyone must perform. It's a circus. The audience is avid with curiosity. They wanted to hear him. I'm sorry, I missed it myself. You're right. They want to satisfy their curiosity, not to find the truth. It's horrible how little it interests them. The truth. It's not about justice, any of this. Oh, are we really so cruel, so indifferent to the suffering of others? What did Dimitri do? Did he try and stop him? Or was he thrilled? Did he see a glimmer of hope for himself? No. He stared at Ivan. He said something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I, th I think he was shocked at the state Ivan was in. 
Well, no one should have paid any attention to what he said, but the atmosphere in there was it was almost as feverish as Ivan was. When he accused himself of the murder, there was a sensation in court, people shouting, and then... And then? She must have thought he was in danger. She? Katya. Oh, of course, Katya. She must have thought that the judge might seriously suspect Ivan. She felt she had to intervene. So Katya stood up. I can imagine the moment. She stood to her full height. Her face pale. Did those beautiful eyes flash? I'm afraid I can't joke about this. But I'm not joking. Please, sir. What a moment. Torn between her faithless fiancé, Dimitri, and the man she truly loves. His brother, Ivan. What is a poor girl to do? What did she do? Oh, don't quarrel. We three at least must remain friends. The world is full of sorrows. How true. She had a letter in her hand. It was from Dimitri. It proved, she said, once and for all, that he was the murderer. She did it to save Ivan. That's what she said. She's going to read the letter to the court this afternoon. Oh, is she? Thank God we're in time for something uh, good. Oh, Alyosha, I'm sorry. It's all working out very nicely. For Katia, at least. I take it she has broken it off with Dimitri now. We won't have to listen to her talking about trudging off to Siberia with him anymore. What a relief. <laughs> I must find Miss Grushenka. Excuse me. Of course. Off you go. I dare say she needs comforting. Yes, she does. She loves Dimitri. Catch's evidence will be enough to see him convicted. It's all over for him now. Will they let her go to Siberia with him? Somehow it's easier to imagine Miss Grushenka trudging away behind the prisoner transport than the other one. If it was you, my darling, I'd have to wave goodbye at the station. I couldn't follow you. I'd have to have arms like pistons to will myself all that way. Just as well you're an innocent, innocent man. Excuse me. Oh. Why do you behave like that to him? Like what? <laughs> Cruelly? Insensitively? In the hope that he will suffer, of course. Oh, Lisa. In the hope that he will suffer for his own sake and not always for the sake of others. Poor Alyosha. I wonder what will become of him. Lisa, that idea you had that you might marry him, that was just a piece of youthful foolishness, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> no. Oh. It doesn't say much for this world that I am the best prospect that poor boy has, and yet I am. If he had the sense to see it. Grushenka! <laughs> What are you doing shouting after me like a schoolboy? I'm sorry. Go away. Can't I have a minute to myself? Look at them staring at me. I won't cry. Have they arrested Ivan? Have they taken him down to the cells? Yes. Good. I'm glad. It won't be for long. They're bound to release him. You understand that? And there is nothing I don't understand. All hope is gone for my meter. I know that. I wish it was Ivan or you in the cells rather than him. Is that a sin? All hope is gone. Now we will see what kind of a man Mitya is. <laughs> Better than either of you. Yeah, I think he is as well. I'm sick of understanding things. It was Smerdyakov who killed our father. Ivan was right about that. Was he? Does it matter? I wonder what will happen. Not the verdict, I'm sure of that. I wonder if I will go to Siberia with him. I know I've made the most violent protestations that I would, but now it actually comes to it. I have the greatest curiosity to see what I'll actually do. What do you think I'll do? Do you want to know why Smerdyakov killed my father? What do people do in Siberia apart from freeze and starve? No one knows who Smerdyakov really was. I know he was a nasty young man who looked at me in a way I didn't like. I know that. One day you must explain all of this to Mitya. Listen to me. Smerdyakov was my brother. Our brother. In the flesh. And in the spirit. Oh, are you being religious again, Alyosha? My father was his father. I mean that literally. Literally. I see. Well, it often happens. Masters sleep with their servants. Oh, his mother wasn't a servant. She was a poor idiot who lived roughly and died of cold the night she gave birth to Smerdyakov in some dirty shed. Grigori took him in. Perhaps on my father's orders, perhaps against them. So? 
He killed his master in revenge, then? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Partly for that, I suppose. I'm going to tell the judge about Smerdyakov, that he's our brother. I have to, even if he thinks I'm lying. My family's already disgraced. Another sordid little secret won't matter now. Nothing will matter when Katerina Ivanovna reads out Dmitri's letter. It's too late now for any intervention of yours or mine. We must bow our heads to fate. <laughs> Besides, what kind of an end to the story is that? Your version. Even if it is true. Can you imagine what the Moscow papers would make of it? They wouldn't believe it. A serf killing his master. His master. And perhaps his father as well. It's not acceptable. It's too political in these troubled times. Mitya is the man. Obviously he is the man. A dissolute member of the ruling class. A bit of a pig, perhaps, but one of ours gone astray. A private tragedy. Far better that. He'll be punished for his greed and violence. In a week or two, it will all be forgotten. It won't mean anything. That's the story everyone wants. You look surprised. I'm sorry. You look surprised that I, a woman like me, could think such things. Could think at all. I see the family resemblance. With Smerdyakov. Yes. All you Karamazovs look at me in the same way. Except him. Except Mitya. And he is the coarsest of you all. Let's not give up hope. I'll go and speak to Katya. Try to persuade her not They to... won't let you near her. I've tried already. I would have thrown myself at her feet and begged her to be merciful. I would have wept and wailed. It would have made a magnificent scene. I had it planned. She'd be really enjoying herself. And then I'd snatch the letter out of her hand. I'd snatch it, rip it into pieces, destroy it. Though actually, I'd much prefer to destroy her. Rip her to pieces. God! I received this letter the day before the crime was committed. I received the letter from Dmitri Fyodorovich, my fiancé. In it... You are the fiancé of the prisoner, Dmitri Fyodorovich Karamazov, and you've done everything possible to assist him. You paid for a learned doctor to come and give evidence on his behalf, but now, at the prompting of your conscience, you've decided to speak out, to tell a terrible truth. You're determined to entirely contradict the evidence of your own expert. Yes, I must. It is inexpressible. You're going to prove, to the complete satisfaction of the court, that the murder was planned prepared and anticipated by the prisoner with a considerable degree of relish. Relish. May I read the letter, Here's please? Here's a man who stole from you, who consorted with harlots, flaunted his relationships with them publicly, and yet you remain true to him. You refuse to abandon him. You refuse to separate your destiny from his. You were prepared to do anything, anything at all to save him. I would have done anything, yes. That's true. But now I must abandon him. I must turn my back on him. I must betray him. Ivan is innocent. And that is your motive in acting as you do now. You refuse to see an innocent man ravaged by grief for the death of his father, outraged by his brother's actions, falsely condemn himself in a moment of madness. Your sentiments do you nothing but credit. I must make my confession. I love Ivan. I love him. But I would have renounced him. I had renounced him, but I... I cannot see him accuse himself in this terrible way. I have made my choice. Your Honour, I beg you, release Ivan Fyodorovich. Must more people suffer for the crimes of this man? This fiend. This is extraordinary. This is preposterous. 
Are we at a murder trial or, or a pantomime? <laughs> Let me show the court that despite this unexpected, bizarre turn of events, I will defend my client. I must object sit to the down. strongest... Sit uh, down. If you are my lawyer, sit down. Let her say whatever she likes. It's all true. I'd forgotten about that letter. Read it, Katya. I forgive you. It's nice to have a chance to forgive you instead of it always being the other way around. If Your Honour... By all means, let us hear the letter. If the young lady is ready. I am ready. I will speak the truth, only the truth. Dimitri sent me this letter, written, as you can see, on the back of a bill. A bar bill! He hated me when he wrote it. He was ashamed of himself. He has every reason to be ashamed. He had run off after some vile creature. <laughs> Don't laugh, Grushenka. Don't laugh. That vile creature! You see her sitting in the front row in all her finery. Her disgraceful finery. Listen to me. When I gave him the money, the 3,000 rubles to send to my sister, it was a test. I knew he intended to desert me and run off with her. I looked him in the eye. Could he be so ignoble as to take this money? Steal this money from me and run off that very afternoon to seduce this female? Yes. Yes, he was that ignoble. True. Every word is true. He knew I would forgive him. I had sworn to forgive him everything. Let him disgrace himself. Let him degrade me. I would not desert him. I told him that. He was sure of me. So he wrote the letter, knowing I would keep it hidden. You misjudged me there. Mm. I'd forgotten about the letter. He knew I would keep it. And that the letter would torment me. That it would torment me forever. He is a man who enjoys the suffering of others. Oh, how exactly would possession of this letter torment you? I... I got this letter the day before he killed his father. And I did nothing. He made me his accomplice. That was his plan. For the rest of my life, he would torment me with that fact. That is very evil. Oh, the pleasure he would have casting it in my teeth. The pleasure. He would have reproached me with it for the rest of my days. Yes. He doesn't deny it. Look how he hangs his head. Katya. Listen. This is what he wrote. I know where the old goat has his money. I'll get it and I'll get him. He won't escape me. I'll knock the old devil's brains out, I will. I'll do it this week. You see? He planned it. Do you accept the letter is yours, that you wrote those words? Yes, I wrote them. I was drunk when I wrote them, but I did write them. And I did mean them. But God was good to me. God looked after me. I did not strike the blow, I swear it. <sighs> Katya. You must not harass the witness. We hated one another, you and I. Yes, we did, but even so, even when I hated you, I loved you. In a way, I did. Uh, you, on the other hand, never loved me. I was merely a scourge for you to whip yourself with. Why, Katya? Why did you deserve such punishment? What sin do you harbour in your soul? Sin. The sin of wanting to rescue you. Of wanting to defend you from yourself. The only reason you wanted me was for my money. Oh, the baseness of it. The vulgarity. You agreed to marry this gentleman as an act of spiritual generosity. He turned her down when she offered herself to him. Offered herself. Tell the court about that missing. Sit down, I beg you, please, Grushka. No, no, you needn't fear, Alyosha. I won't be provoked. 
An animal of some kind grunts in the undergrowth, but let it. I only have this more to say. Ivan Fyodorovich is a gentle soul, a misunderstood soul. People gossip about him, his politics. <sighs> politics. He is a man longing above all else for the betterment of his fellow human beings, as I do. He is bitter sometimes. He speaks bitterly, but his soul shines like a furnace, a burning furnace. His brother's actions have tortured him as they have tortured me. Thank you so much. You have been of the greatest assistance. One more word. I have one more thing to say. It is of the greatest significance. This nonsense about Smerdyakov, it is nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Ivan spoke of him, others have spoken of him. I know why. There is a rumour, true, false, that Smerdyakov was the son, the product of a liaison of his father's. Are you saying? Yes, and I think it is probably true. He was his son. Ivan was ill when the news of this poor man's suicide became known. He saw the body, and so in his fever, raving, this strange notion about Smerdyakov being the murderer came to him. He was driven mad by his desire to save this monster. You call me a monster? I do. Yes, I do. She has brought ruin upon you, my Mitenka. She has brought ruin upon us both. Smerdyakov? Is that true? Yes. And that was the ace I had hidden. Now she's played it against us and we are lost. Of course they will. No, I'll take my oath upon it. They won't convict. Did you hear the evidence? Did you listen? Evidence? Who's interested in evidence? Everyone knew old Karamazov was a vile old reprobate, an unpleasant old sinner. I know it's murder, I know it's the murder of a parent, a father. But seriously, there are fathers and fathers. Perhaps Dimitri did give him a bit of a tap on the head, but who can blame him? Oh, I saw how well the prosecution's closing speech went down, even if you didn't. No, he spoke well, I suppose. I grant you that. But in the end, it's all worse. Well, I think they'll convict. How certain are you? You fancy a wager, dear? Ooh, what are you saying? <laughs> Alexei Fyodorovich, I didn't were see you the... betting on the verdict? Is that what you were doing? God, what kind of men are you? You misunderstood. We were talking of a horse race, weren't we? Oh. Well, sir, I for one find it pretty amusing to be lectured about my behaviour by a Karamazov. Very amusing, in fact. You're right. If we were not capable of passing by, of passing by and laughing while another human being suffers the most profound agony of body and spirit, how could our species survive? Huh? If we could not endure, even enjoy each other's griefs and sorrows, what would become of us? You do well, gentlemen. Forgive the interruption. I wouldn't mind, but I was betting Dimitri would be freed. I was on his side. Look at the jury's faces. What do you think, Alyosha? Is it good or bad they only took an hour? If you are ready, gentlemen. We're ready. First, I will ask for your verdict, and then I will ask for your recommendations. Is that understood? I understand, sir. We all understand. First, on the charge of murder, did you reach a unanimous verdict? We reached a unanimous verdict about all of it. Good. That's very good. He's guilty. He's guilty of the murder, the robbery, everything. You're supposed to wait until I ask you. I thought you had. The charges are supposed to be taken separately. Sorry. We can do that if you like. It's too late for that now. It's silence. Silence! Yeah. Well, do you have any recommendations as to the clemency? The maximum sentence is 20 years exile to Siberia. Do you wish to alter that in any way? 
in respect of the defendant's youth and taking into account the issue of provocation. Let him do the 20 years, Your Honour. That's our recommendation. I will speak. The last time I will speak here in this room. I am innocent. I am innocent of his blood. I swear that with my hand on the throne of God. Katya, I forgive you. My brothers, look after my darling Grushenka. Look after her for my sake. Take me away. Take me away from this place. Oh, your sir, explain it to me. Make it make sense to me. Be brave. You will be brave, I know it. I've known all along that this would happen. Why then is it such a shock? In a moment, my life is rushed over a precipice. I'm falling. Everything is dark. They must let me see him. We will go and see him. Where is the judge? Where is he? He should have condemned me as well. He's gone. All the officials are gone. They will let me go with him into exile, won't they? I'm responsible for all this. Oh, Yosha. It happened so long ago, in another life, a month ago, six weeks ago. I don't understand that girl. The one I was. How she behaved. Letting Dimitri believe I would go with your father. Letting him think his own father was a rival. And who knows, if he had been rich enough. If he had been rich enough, would I have sold myself to him? Would I? No. Oh. In the end, no. The world has been cruel to me. Does that excuse my behaviour? No. They will let me go with him. They will let me do that. I don't know. You must make them. You must explain. Oh, Yosha, do this for me. I would do anything for you. Let me walk you home now. They will let us see him later today. I'll arrange that. Come with me. Come. There you are. I was looking for you. Where else would I be but sitting in this room? Sitting, sitting, sitting. I have some news. Yes? Wait until you hear this. It is extraordinary. You listening, Lisa? It's about Katerina Ivanovna. She has had Ivan taken from the hospital and brought round to her house. Imagine that. Apparently, she is determined to nurse him herself. I bet she has bought a lovely long apron and has her hair very plainly but exquisitely dressed. Wouldn't suit her. But that is not the point, is it? Apart from the servants, there's no one else in the house. It's another scandal. But of course she has done it from the best of motives. What do you think? I try not to. Everyone is talking about it. We should have a dinner party to cheer you up. <sighs> Are you absolutely certain of that? I have an awful feeling I would be horribly rude to our guests. I am very annoyed with that boy. Which boy? Alyosha has better things to do than come and sit in our drawing room and gossip. I only wish I had better things to do myself. We must go to Moscow. Moscow? Or St. Petersburg. Why not? Why not indeed? You're walking better than ever, most days. You will get over it, my love. I will get over it. What a terrible thought. How cynical. I'm not really, you know, cynical. I thought he would come. Oh, I am so angry with him. I would never have permitted him to present himself as a suitor. Never. But he should have tried. He certainly should have tried. So let us talk of something else. Tell me about Dmitri. Can we talk of nothing but these Karamazovs? Is he well? Will he marry Groshenka and take her to Siberia with him? 
How romantic that sounds. How unbearably squalid it would be in reality. You would think a woman like her would have the sense to cut her losses. Perhaps she loves him. <laughs> there is only one conclusion to be drawn from all this. And what is that? He has forgotten all about me. That's why he hasn't come. He will never come. I'm a fool to sit here by the window, aren't I? Don't say anything comforting to me. I won't. <laughs> Mama. I can see you. There's no point sitting there looking like Alyosha. I know who you are. It is me, Ivan. It's me, Alyosha, really. Is it? Oh, of course it is. Do you know what I hate about him? Who? The devil. You must concentrate on what I'm saying. We were talking about the devil. Listen. He's an atheist. A dyed-in-the-wool non-believer. He's proved to me that God doesn't exist, that all things are permissible. He uses the words I used to smudge a cough. You don't believe that all things are permissible? No. Are you sure? You must rest and get well. You mustn't let anything trouble you. As long as I'm well when the trial starts, that's the main thing. I am getting better, aren't I? Yes. I'm going to confess. Confess to everything. The murder. Everything. His head was cracked open. Did you know that? Yes. Cracked open. Cracked open. Quiet now. I'll save Dimitri. That's all I care about. I will save him. Good, good. Sometimes Katya comes to visit me. It isn't really Katya, I know that. And what would Katya be doing in my dirty lodgings? But she puts her hand on my forehead. She cries, kisses my mouth, and tells me she loves me. How simple it might have been. We might have loved each other, her and me. Loved each other. Been happy. That still might be. No, I'll be in prison. Uh, or the madhouse. Geek! Not, not the madhouse. Please. In the madhouse I'd be alone with him. The devil. There's a cure for it all, you know. It Talk to me all the time. My patent medicine. A nice little knife. A nice little knife. A tight, a tight little rope. Type. A lead and bullet. Bullet, bullet buried deep, buried deep, deep into the brain. And then, and then silence. Perfect peace. Did you hear him? Did you hear him then? I know what he says. You've told me what he says. Lie still. You think suicide is a sin? It is a sin. The irresistible sin. At that moment when he had Jesus on top of the mountain, they say in the gospel he offered him the world and everything in it. That's a lie. I know what the devil offered. He offered death. He tempted him with the cross, and Christ took it. That's what happened. Is it nearly morning yet? It's midday. Wake me up, won't you, when it's morning? I'll get up. I'll get dressed in a nice, clean shirt. You can help me. I don't mind if you help me. Just you. My brother. And we'll go to the court together. We'll save Dimitri. Won't we? Would you have gone without speaking to me, Alexei Fyodorovich? No. No, I want very much to speak to you. You blame me. You blame me for everything. No, I don't. I've sent one brother to Siberia and it looks as though I will send another to the grave. I shouldn't say that. It can't be true. He looks so ill. But the doctors are confident. They are very confident. I, Varm would say, well, they're paid to be confident. There's no point in them coming in saying hopeless and turning on their heels. There's no money in that. Best to keep the hopes up and the rubles flowing. You can make jokes. You are braver than I. He will be well again. Will you swear to it? I will. I swear before God he will get better. 
I love him for his pride, for his faults, for his arrogance and his self-contempt. I, I understand that. Once we sat, the two of us, hand in hand for half an hour without speaking, we could not trust ourselves to speak. I was happy, painfully happy. I need to talk to you about Dimitri, Katya. If only I'd met him before Dimitri. No, I wanted Dimitri. I wanted some lost cause. I wanted a wounded man, a sinner to make myself seem a saint, a noble woman walking untainted through the filth and corruption of this world, a beacon, a light, a fool. Do you think I don't know I'm a fool? As for the corruption, how curious I was about that, how avid to peer down into that abyss, perhaps to touch the surface of it with my fingertips, perhaps to throw myself into it headlong. And worse than Grushenka, you know, what she did, her life, that was a matter of necessity, whereas I, I wanted to sin. I did not have the courage. That is what we call virtue, a lack of courage. I ruined us all, our lives, our hopes. Yours as well. Then you must make amends. How? Dmitri didn't kill our father. I respect you, Alyosha. I respect this delusion. Oh. Your love for your brother prompts you. Dmitri must be guilty if he didn't. <sighs> Why do you always speak of him? Have you no pity for Ivan? Uh, they are both my brothers. I love them equally. Love is never equal. One always puts a thumb in the scale for one side or the other. We won't argue. You think I am a vain fool? You Katya, think... there is no time for this. We have to talk seriously. How could Smerdyakov have killed your father? Oh, what's done is done. I forgive you. Dmitri forgives you. The question is, will you help him now? Ivan would wish it. Sit down. Let us compose ourselves. We will talk seriously, but first, are you hungry? Would you like some tea? One forgets you are still a boy. I want to talk to you about helping Dmitri to escape. Escape? Yes. I know Ivan had a plan. He'd contacted an officer who helped in the transport of prisoners, willing to take a bribe. I know you were involved, Katya. Yes, I, I knew about it. I knew all about it. Good. You must tell me about it, Katerina. I need the details. Why? Mitya wouldn't agree to it. I know. I was the one who told Ivan that Mitya wouldn't agree. But now he must be persuaded. He must be. It was all quite simple. Go on. The officer would sneak Dmitri out on the third night. Ivan would be nearby. He would have her, that creature, with him, Grushenka. The three of them would escape together and run away to America. America. That would be the last I saw of him, of Ivan. He would need to go with them to make sure the comrades got them out of Russia. And the beauty of it was I was to pay for it all. The bribe, the transport cost to America, and the money to start a new life. You know the officer's name? I told you I know everything. I know the name of the ship he planned to sail away on. But then Dimitri said no. No escape. He wished to suffer. He had sinned and deserved Siberia. I would have done it. Paid for it all. I would have had the courage for that. Will you help us now? Do you think Ivan will come to forgive me and love me, Alexei? If I save Dmitri? Ivan has always loved you, from the very beginning. It is his nature that love and the feeling of being in love infuriates him. That's not your fault. Ivan is too sick to travel now. He has to stay here with me, doesn't he? Yes. Then I can say good riddance to those two. It will give me nothing but pleasure to act the generous patron when you and I know my motives are entirely selfish. You're not the dreadful person you fear you are. I am. Why did I take that letter into the courtroom? Because I hoped in my heart that someone, something, would provoke me into revealing it. That is what we are like. That is what people are like. Perhaps that is true. It doesn't matter at this moment what you and I think. You and I are not the centre of this story. How deflating. <laughs> you like to do that, don't you? Deflate my pretensions. Will you help me? 
I need a lot of money. Of course. You see how he sits in that dirty dressing gown? He's been sitting like that since 27 minutes past one. I know that because I have a very expensive watch given to me by one of my former patrons. <sighs> Will nothing I say provoke him? I'll be reduced to kissing the prison guard before long. How is he, the other one? Have you seen him today? He's getting better. I think he is. And the witch? What did she have to say for herself? I talked to her of Dimitri's escape. She's agreed to help. Oh, she may have, but Mitra will never do it. I have the name of the officer who's willing to be bribed. What do you suppose America is like? I don't know. They have cities the size of Moscow. It's all quite civilised. I always wanted to go to Italy. Well, go then. Go wherever you wish. Do you hear what I was saying, Mitya? We're discussing your future, your escape. They won't allow her to come to Siberia with me, even if I marry her. Good. Good. It is better so. But you must swear always to look after my Grushka. Swear it, Alexei Fyodorovich. Swear it in the name of all the saints and angels. You will look after her, not me. I'm not a humble man. I'm a violent, angry fool. If they beat me, if the warders there beat me, if they raise their hands to me, I will not submit. I will attack. They will shoot me. It will be better so. I cannot bear to think of how they will treat me. Perhaps they will spit at me. Do you think so? I could endure torture. Let them break me, burn me, hang me. But if they say things to me, or if they laugh at me... Katerina Ivanovna knows all the details of Ivan's plan. No, no. I will not escape. I won't <sighs> abandon my cruel fate. It's all I have. It's all I own. No. That's the word he says. That's the answer to everything. That's what it comes to. All his protestations. The vows he made to me. No. Do you love me above everything? No. Not more than pride. Will you be with me? No. Will you sacrifice your conceit for me? No. Will you abandon this mad delusion of suffering? Oh, no. Sure, Will you bring one small ray of light back into the world? No. Will you break my heart no. with pleasure? He won't escape. He wants to make a martyr of himself. The people judged me. The people? A rabble of fat old men who feared how the murder might inspire their own sons. I did not kill my father. I know that. We are guilty men. What does it matter that the details of our indictment are wrong? But it is not you alone, Mitya, who will suffer the blow. Think of your Grushka. Oh, Alyosha. How you weaken me. Think also of Katerina Ivanovna. Christ, curse her! Hush! Only if you escape will she ever be able to forgive herself. Otherwise she will carry that burden to the grave. Her happiness depends on you. Ivan's happiness. Oh. Mine. You. Katya. Well, I suppose even the prison warder would have had the manners to wait to be invited in, but not you. I will kneel here, Dmitri Fyodorovich, on this ground, until you say you have forgiven me. You are here. I knew you would come. Did you? Did you ask her to come? Tell her, Alyosha, tell her how I feel. I can't speak. At the beginning of this story, the elder knelt before Dmitri in token that his time of suffering was about to begin. Do you remember that, Mitya? <sighs> and now this woman is kneeling before you to say that your time of suffering is over. You forgive me, and I forgive you. All my life you will be a wound in my soul, and I will be a wound in yours. Oh, God. 
off now if you are listening. Restrain you me. You must be quiet, Grushek. Must I? Why? Because I ask you to. This woman and I must speak to one another. Were they all lies then, the words we spoke? I worshipped you. I wanted you. I told you again and again I loved you. What did those words mean, Dimitri? I am the one who betrayed you in the end. Yes, you are. The betrayal? Well, let's not talk of that. What is worse, I think, is how much we disappointed one another. I disappointed you, of course, but beautiful Katya, you disappointed me as well. Disappointed you? How? How dare you say I disappointed you? It's not the time for this conversation. You forgive one another. That is enough. Dmitri Fyodorovich, when I spoke in the court, when I gave evidence against you, I believed you guilty. As long as I kept speaking, I was convinced. But the minute I stopped, I knew... What did you know? I am innocent. Do you believe me? Everything hangs on that. I don't care what you said before, what you believed before. Now, at this moment, you must answer me. Katerina Ivanovna, do you believe me innocent of the murder of my father? I believe you. Before God? On your hopes of salvation? Yes. Oh, thank you. I agree to America. Do you? Because Missy here throws you a few kind words. Grushka. That's absolution. All right, Grushka. Show your metal. Biting and fighting forbidden. We have to be practical. We need money for the escape. We need it today or tomorrow. Will you give it to us? I am to rescue you as well, am I? That is part of the price I must pay, it seems. Speak gently, Katerina. She can speak as she likes, as long as she gives us the money. Don't <laughs> talk to her in that way. Grushenko has borne much. And I have not? Very well. You sent Alyosha to beg for help, and I will give it. I didn't send Alyosha. I didn't beg for help. I went of my own accord, Katya. Of course, before you swore you would go to Siberia to suffer for your sins, but everyone changes their mind. Oh. We are all human. He's thinking of us, of me of Grushenka, of you, Katya, and your conscience. And he's thinking of Ivan, of how he will feel if he were to hear that his brother was in Siberia. He's wondering if he could survive that blow. I have decided in his name, in that lofty soul's name, and for his sake, I will assist you. Oh, what are you trying to do? <laughs> you want to make me angry. You wish to provoke me into casting this gift in your teeth. Would that be a, a last and most pleasurable twist of the knife? Yes, that is what I am trying to do. Why? Alyosha, what demon is in my heart? I should be ashamed of myself. Well, Katya, you don't mind if I call you Katya? We are almost family. Speak. If you want my opinion, I blame us both about equally for the sorry pass we brought our men to. Me more than you, probably. I admit that. No. No. And yet, it's true. One day, one night, when we are in America and I am drunk, I will say all that to you. I will remember your words and repeat them to you. I will tell you that lie, that exact lie, that you are to blame for it all. And I will rejoice to see you cry. <laughs> yes. Yes, I will never cease to be what I am. A Karamazov, a greedy, impetuous beast, a cockroach. Listen, Grushka, everything that has happened to me, I brought upon myself. It was not you, either of you, that made this man. It was not the times, the turmoil of our times that made me. I made myself this monster. Remember, I went to the house that night. Remember the weapon I had in my hand? It was God's love that saved me. Isn't that true, Alyosha? Yes, I believe that. I believe he is willing to save us. Yes, I hope that's true. I have nothing more to say. We forgive each other. It is enough. I don't forgive you. Never. I don't forgive myself. I will never see you again, Dimitri. Farewell. Farewell. She enjoyed that scene, didn't she? Run after her, Alyosha. Make sure of her. 
of our money. I trust her, don't worry. Until tomorrow, Mitya. At the end of the month, he'll be in America. <laughs> America! We will go to America, Grushka. There will be times when we will give our souls to be even in Siberia so long as we were home in Russia. I will hate America. Oh, that foreign jabber. How will we live over there, on the edge of the world? I'll be back with news tomorrow. Why did I talk of Russia? It's not losing Russia that will break my heart. Very soon I will say goodbye to him. I will say goodbye to Alyosha and never see him again. I will never see the man he will become. How is that possible, Grushka? Graveyard, you never feel anywhere else. A cold, cruel wind. Makes your poor, shivering body know how mortal it is. Is that Smerdyakov's grave? It's his grave. It's where I buried him. I dug it myself, him being a suicide. His mother put a cross in his hands, but that wasn't enough for some people. Superstitious peasants. Do people still believe such things? <laughs> oh, yes. It's true, it's a thin line between us and them, the dead ones. He was restless in life, so he won't be different dead. I put the rope in his coffin to remind him. Vodka? No, no thanks. I'll give the boy a drop. A bit of bread and a handful of salt. The bread is his. Will you eat some salt for him? Yes. Smerdyakov. He was my father's son. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask me something else about Dmitri. Are you angry that I gave evidence against him? Hmm? I loved him the best of you all. You know that Ivan is very ill? Brain fever, they say. Well, mm -hmm. as a man sows. Will he live, do you think? Yes, I think he can be persuaded to do that. He meant Smerdyakov no harm. That's a comfort. But he meant him no good, I dare say. I would like to think you forgave us. I dare say you would. You didn't believe Dmitri guilty of the murder. Not really, and yet you gave evidence against him. I forgive you for that in all our names. In the name of the Karamazovs, eh? Well, Smerdyakov was my son. He deserved something. Someone had to suffer. So, Alyosha, what will become of you? Uh, I will leave this town, this place. Perhaps, perhaps I will go to Moscow. I don't know. <sighs> Another handful of salt, yes. and then we're done. <coughs> uh, take the vodka. Oh. You'll need it now. Mm. Ah, you're getting a taste for it, I see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are not the boy you were. No. Mm. Have you been to speak with your mother? I wish... I could remember her. Sometimes, when I go to sleep... Ah, to be my mafia, you remember, then. She was the one who tucked you up and kissed you. Give your mother my respects. I will. Come and see my woman before you go. You owe her that, Alexei Fyodorovich? I don't know what flowers you like, Mother. If you liked any. I think you may have had hay fever. Someone told me that. So, I'll take a little of Smerdyakov's bread and scatter it on your grave. 
the birds will come, and I'll imagine that somewhere you hear them singing. I've come to say farewell, Mama. Did I call you that? I've come to say goodbye. When I think of this town in the future, I'd like to remember this place, your grave. Ivan will be well. He will regain his health and, most importantly, his courage. He'll need courage if he's to marry Katya. And yet, her heart is good. I hope. As for Mitya, he's not your son, but I think you must have loved him. He too has a woman, a good woman. I assure you, she is a good woman, despite certain, certain things in her past. Things I can't say to you. You smile. You think I'm such a boy still. I have no one, and that's curious because I would like to love and be loved, but somehow I'm not fit for it. Mama, if you were here to counsel me, what would you say? I can't imagine. You're crying. Don't cry. The blessed dead are not supposed to cry, and yet even in heaven, I imagine you weeping. How cruel my father was to you! There's his grave beside you. Between you and Mitya's mother, I know you're there, old man. You're listening to me and smirking. She's nice, dry bone. While you, of course, are a mess of corruption, rotting. How you must enjoy that. Still, if you had not died, if we had not murdered you, what might have happened? What monsters might we have become, huh? The brothers Karamazov. I might have become a saint, a saint in the eyes of the world, and an affront to God. Poor God. I wish I could hear your voice. You would laugh at me and ask for brandy. Old man. You never really became an old man. Don't be hurt, Mama. That I think of him. That I'm always thinking of him. You're not a Karamazov. You're not one of us, and I don't say that to wound you. It should make you happy. Listen to the birds. Don't listen to me. I will go and find an unknown life and live it every minute. And at times, if I fear myself, if I fear my greedy, restless soul, don't blame me. Don't be angry with me. Bless me. Bless me, both of you. And in the name of the merciful, let me go. In the final episode of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Dmitry Karamazov was played by Paul Hilton, Ivan Nicholas Bolton, Alyosha Karl Prekop, Katerina Juliet Aubrey. Grushenka, Katie Kavanagh, and Grigori by Desmond McNamara. Lisa was Emma Noakes, Mrs. Koglakova, Rachel Atkins, the judge, Ian Masters, the prosecutor, Philip Fox, and Fetchukovic by Mark Straker. The jury spokesman was Sam Dale, and the bystanders, Paul Richard Biggin and Saiket Ahmed. The Brothers Karamasov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray, Original music by David Pickvance, and the directors were Mark Beebe and Colin Guthrie.